Oh Lord. What are oh, you shit. what what are you uh <laughs> what are you like picky about though exactly? Like so I've never liked like I've never liked quote unquote bad boys. So if you're like a drug dealer, can't fuck with you. I'm too old for that drug dealing shit, going to jail. Like I don't like that. Niggas still selling drugs at like third mid third in that third. Hell yeah. Absolutely. That shit's yeah, ghetto. And they, I don't like they it. Really are. <laughs> Hell niggas yeah. still selling drugs. The niggas still selling drugs in their forties. What are we talking about? Right. No, exactly. Mm-mm. If that's your main it. source of income, I can't do it. I just can't. So it could be a side hustle, <laughs> Just don't tell me about it. <laughs> oh my god, man! I don't know. I just got kids. They're older. Like I can't. Like any, just anybody can't be in my space. I can't do it. But I'm saying, but but what exactly are your requirements that make you say that you're picky, though? Um. But saying I can't talk to a nigga that deal drugs like that don't like for me that would just be a given like I would I wouldn't even think to hear you list that as a reason like I would already be assuming that okay like no drug dealers is just like a you know? there's some girls out here that really want a drug dealer but I'm I mean saying, I under oh. I mean I get that but I'm just saying the way that I'm thinking I wasn't expecting for that to be like your first answer like oh that's true. Um, I don't know. I'm just figuring it out. I feel like, uh, maybe like, I don't know. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm just figuring it out. I'll tell you all this shit is new. So like, I know you can't like, like you can't be in your thirties still like living with your parents, like shit like that. Like basic shit. Like, can you be like making your own money? I don't really give a fuck besides being a drug dealer. Um, can you make your own money? Like, I just don't, can you have like a job or something? Can you have like a entrepreneurship anything so you telling me niggas don't have i mean it's atlanta niggas got jobs like i'm i'm confused you would think that but they like i just want people i just want whoever it is to be like not further along but like at least i don't want to call out no names uh i'm trying to think so there's one person in particular that was interested in me I don't care that he has two jobs, but it's like he has two jobs and still like dress bum, not like he can't, it's like dress bummy, like his clothes be like dirty and like his dad lives with him. Like I can't do like- Okay, no, well, let's, let's, let's back up. Home. Let's back up for one help second. Help me Nick, help me Nick. See, I, that don't sound like she about to help you, <laughs> but go ahead. No, I feel like I can't get my thoughts out. Go ahead Nick. <laughs> no, I, I'm 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 with her with her thoughts, but anytime there's dirt involved, that's a or a, that's an automatic disqualification. Yeah, like, like st- he looks dirty, his clothes are like bleached. Like you can't you can't even give me the rest of your statistics because or or the rest of your specifications because you're dirty. Period. You're crusty. Like I'm confused. Exactly. Why do you think I'm even looking at you? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, there's somebody out here that would clean your dirty ass it's just not me so all right so they can't sell dr- so you basically need a, a a clean non-drug dealer that doesn't seem hard it's it i mean uh i don't know how to explain it jackson i don't know i'm new to this shit i don't know like it's a vibe thing like i just if you seem a little off like can we i don't know I don't know. I'm I'm new to this. I don't know. You gotta keep in mind, I was married for 10 years. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now. But Jackson, you would think a lot of things are basic, but they're not, and it's not. not so basic anymore. Dating is trash. It's trash. It's a lot of piss in the dating pool, I told y'all. I'm trying to think what else. It's trash. <sighs> you gotta have a, a very strong mentality out here, like really be confident in who you are and not lose sight of that trying to impress somebody you trying to get with or link up with. Mm-hmm. Especially for the women, the ladies have a way of just losing themselves and just wanting to become mm-hmm. in this nigga's skin. <laughs> this okay. nigga's skin. You know, when they date them, like, well, what you doing? I want to go with you. Uh, and see, I'm not like that. I don't want to go, go nowhere with you. Yeah, yeah I want to go to the gym me. with you. Why you got to go to the gym all the time? Can't you just stay here with me? Uh, I don't know. That's another no, thing I won't make that mistake again either. Please have your own damn friends. Like, I just can't. Right. Like, no. You got to have your own life. Right. That was the issue. I don't want to be your whole entire life. I want you to be able to go out with your boys, go hang out, 
if I don't see you today, tomorrow, the next day, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'll see you eventually. Like, I don't. Don't lose sight of who you are. And that's what happened to me. I lost, I lost it completely because I'm like, oh, he has no friends, so I have to be his whole world. Nah. And it's like, that. nah, you gotta go make friends. Now this nigga got friends. He done went to the gym. He done got buff. Good. Goodbye. Go oh, wait, wait you talking about your, your, your ex? ex your ex yeah. husband? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he ain't living his best life. Me too. So it's cool. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious, man. The feeling is mutual. Oh, that's hilarious. Can I show y'all this little uh, sex toy case that I got as a complimentary gift for a Black-owned business? Juneteenth Ooh. is tomorrow. Well, sure. Let's see. What you let got? Let's see. This is from um, Amina's Pouch. It's a Black woman-owned business, Amina's Pouch. And she creates pouches for sex toy storage and traveling, right? Like a toy, so literary, come, a toy literary bag. Kind of, so kind of like that. But I'm fun. Oh, Jackson. Bimble crash. <laughs> hey. Yes. So okay. it comes with the, it comes in a, the nice box and then the duster bag or whatever. And right now she just has it in red and pink. Of course I got red. That's one of my favorite colors, right? Okay. Oh, that's cute. So it's like a uh, it is a velour ish. Mm-hmm. And it has two zippers. I'm gonna talk about it on the Instagram, but um, you know. Nice. It does look it su- it looks super like plush. Mm-hmm. Sure. It's really nice. You know, I want to buy toys oh, to put it cute, in there. Nick. And then it's here, and you put like your dildo or your vibrator here with the strap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got right? motherfucking. That's have a dildo so stress. <laughs> and then it has wow. a little pocket here where you could put like your condoms and things. Mm-hmm. And then it has another little pocket down here. Is this a pocket? Oh, yes. It's a, it goes this way. Yeah. Another thing here where you could, I guess you could put like your lube or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then even when you strap in your um your dildo in here or a vibrator or whatever toy you're going to strap in, you still got extra space to like cover it up with. Oh, that's cute. Uh, that is really cute. Nice? And, it's and you can fill it all up with Nick's stuff in there. There you go. It's only $40. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that's is, no, that should look, that should look fire. But and that's something that a lot of people don't bucks. think it's about, definitely too. Retail for, for more. It looked like a trapper keeper. That's what it reminded me of. That's exactly <laughs> what it feel like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good it's idea, so too. Not a lot of people thought, not a lot of people probably think of that. Yep. Yeah, niggas just be stuffing they uh they toys and shit in the luggage with their regular <laughs> clothes. Yep. And then, when, then when fucking TSA go through it and shit, oh I gotta I gotta uh check this and now all your business is out. Or they just like there's something buzzing in your bag. <laughs> and Has that like, ever happened to you? Excuse, that's happened to me. Yeah. Oh shit. It's happened to me, and I was like, oh that's probably my vibrator. Let me see. <laughs> don't give a fuck. <laughs> the shit is normal for me, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's funny, man. What's that? Uh, be embarrassed. What's their What's their Instagram and, and website and all that? I don't know the website, but the Instagram is Amina's Pouch. A M I N A S Pouch. She is uh, it's female, black owned. But um, it's I like the presentation of it all. It's really nice. so cute. She asked me to uh, review it for her, so oh, okay. I will. And we met on um, on somebody else's live. The girl active wear that I buy all the time, FBF. Mm-hmm. She was on there, and she was like, "Oh, because everybody, you know, they know the name." So they was like, "Oh, Roddy Boudoir, I you have the toys, and I have the the pouches to carry them with." And I was like, "Girl." Hey girl, <laughs> <laughs> let's work. Let's, let's, That's what let's I said. Fill it up with Nick stuff. All right. That's she needs a bigger enough. pouch to fill up my shit. You right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. So um, let me, let oh, me show you what I travel with. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> One second, please. <laughs> so while Nick is going to get her her uh, her dick bag, she not bring back a duffel bag. I'm gonna be so mad. Yeah. I'm gonna right. throw my i my iPad if she brings a duffel bag. Probably in is yeah. But uh, while she go while she go finds her her bag of dicks or her dick bag or whatever, um, I'm on I'm on IG live right now. So let me just tell them what I'm doing and shit like that. So, uh, I have a I have a show. I have a pod. It's called One Mike Stand. 
Um, I don't know, may, maybe you heard of it, maybe you saw some clips on my page or what have you. Uh, but every Thursday we come out with uh, new episodes. Every Friday we come on the Zoom. Every two for the Patreon people. Um, every Tuesday we come on the Zoom for the Patreon people as well. And then uh, I might, you know, go go live on like a random Monday or a random Thursday or something like that. Uh, but tonight, I wanted to basically just come on here real quick, chop it up with the with the with the fraternity, with the family, because um, the last couple of Zoom calls that we had, uh, we we got into conversations about about sex, just in general. We got into conversations about sex toys with Irada Boudoir, of course. Uh, we got into some sex conversations about my my own personal individual uh, sex and my sex style and my sex techni techniques. And I felt like I was getting interrogated, which I had expressed in my uh, most recent episode that just came out yesterday. And I kind of like low key had like a had like a, a rebuttal, a rant rebuttal, half half rebuttal, half rant, uh, half spaz out. Or whatever and then after i kind of had my was able to you know have the the floor to kind of explain my mindset or my mentality or you know how i viewed sex over the years um it was i guess they came to a consensus that you know what you know what Jax, you might need to really go to like see a sex therapist and you might need to get some therapy and you might need to unpack a lot of the things that you got going on in your mind and your head and trying not to, you know, overthink and, and all that and just trying to like live in the moment and, and things of that nature, right? So uh Penelope and I think uh uh Mary um and I'm not sure who else had, had mentioned it, but they was like they wanted me to they wanted me to try this therapy thing uh to the point where they offered to you know pay for like the first few sessions or what have you. Um so a few days ago, I think it might have been either Monday or Tuesday morning. Uh, Penelope hit me up and she had found a couple of she found a couple of therapists uh, that she thought, you know, would, I guess, work work well for me or uh, that I would be able to choose from from them. Um, and I chose the one that I chose. She gave me all women. Let me let me say that she gave me all women. Um, and then the one that I did choose, she actually gave, she gives or offers like a free, like 15 minute, like consultation or whatever. So in reality, my first, what I call a session was really a consultation, but instead of like when, when her and I got to talking, instead of it being 15 minutes, like it ended up being like, like 30 to 35 minutes. So, <laughs> so that's why I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck it. Like for me, that's basically a session. Cause it was a, it was, a, it was the first time I've ever, uh, first time I've ever talked to a therapist, like, you know, while like they're on the job and shit like that. Um, uh, first time I talked to a therapist in the, in the chair or in the position of being like a patient, so to speak. Uh, so I didn't really know what to expect. I, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I'm not going to lie. Like I've never been opposed to therapy. I've all, and I've always said that I wanted to actually try it. Um, but like when it became official that, you know what, all right, we're going to do it tomorrow. We're going to do it at 1230. And I know I have a face of like who I'm going to be talking to. It honestly was a little bit, I got a little nervous. I got a little nervous and not because like um not because I was in I was going to be embarrassed to say whatever it is that I was going to say. I was just nervous because it was it was something new. It was uncharted waters. It was you know, I get on a I get on a pod, I get on a microphone, I get in front of cameras and and speak about my life in terms of like using it for entertainment and to start conversations and, and uh, start dialogue for other people to for like kind of like for other people to kind of to open the space or make a make a safe space for other people to to low-key have their therapeutic moments by listening to me 
feeling safe because they don't now they no longer think that this is a, a taboo conversation. So in a way, like I'm playing therapist, or at least in my own mind, I'm trying to play therapist so that other people can like practice being more transparent, practice being more honest, practice being more open. But now, like for the first time, it was me doing it for like the health of me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like not for not for entertainment, not for content, not with hopes of starting a conversation for someone else or a, a group of people that I think that I'm more emotional intelligent than like, you know what I'm saying? Like none of those like kind of thoughts. It was like solely individual based, like, all right, nigga, this is for you. This is for you to try to learn a new perspective that maybe you haven't considered. This is for you trying to maybe, uh, you know, become healthier mentally when it comes to like living in the moment and not overthinking so much. Cause that's just like my MO at the, at this point. Um, so I was nervous. I was, I was really nervous. I ain't gonna lie. Like I was nervous the night before I was like, damn, it did. And it didn't help. It didn't help that all of the options that, that Penelope sent to me, like all of them were like attractive women and shit like that. And that's kind of what my episode was about. I don't know if y'all got a chance to watch it yet, but that's kind of what the episode was about yesterday where it was like, it almost feels like it was a, uh, an exorcism in the fact that it had to be done this way. Like I got to talk to some bad bitches about how trash or potentially trash my sex is because like, that's just like the most uncomfortable conversation possible. Like, you know what I'm saying? Talking to an attractive woman about bad sex. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I don't know. I just found that to be funny and ironic or whatever, but, uh, you know, I got on there and she did, she was nice looking. She did look nice or whatever. Um, you know, we said our salutation. She kind of led the conversation because I didn't really know. Like, I didn't, I didn't know what was supposed to happen. So she asked me a couple of warm up questions. She asked me like, what were my, what were my goals? She asked me to tell her like about myself. Um, and I honestly, I really kind of just told her the story about the last couple of zoom calls i told her i had a pod i told her you know kind of what i try to talk about um i told her that i was like uh you know pretty super open and honest and about the things that i'm insecure about um and just try to create conversations out of out of those insecurities um and then i and she asked me like again she asked me what my goals were and i told her like i i tried to sum it up and um i think that i would like to try to live in the moment more, try to not overthink as much um, in life in general, but specifically for sex, because that was the Zoom calls were the conversations that this whole kind of therapy uh, fucking experiment kind of derived from. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I wanted to make it clear that even though she's not specifically a sex therapist, um, I just want to let her know that that's probably what this whole journey is gonna revolve around or whatever. Um, because my, I told her like my, my friends, you know, they think that I've got issues. They think that I've got problems, you know what I mean? So they just wanted me to come to therapy or whatever. So I agreed to it and you know, here I am. And, uh, and yeah, and then we just chopped it up for like, like I said, like 30, 35 minutes. Um, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna just do it weekly, I would assume. So I probably set up a, um, the, like the real, the for real first session sometime next week. Usually my off days are, are Wednesdays where I literally don't have anything scheduled as far as like recording or going live or nothing like that. So Wednesday will more than likely be my day, my, my therapy day, like, you know what I'm saying? So um so I, I don't really know what to expect uh it was cool I'm kind of looking forward to just like learning more about the process learning more I guess about myself and really just like I said like learning more seeing seeing what she sees from from an outsider's point of view um that's more so what I'm really interested in in knowing and honestly not even for content purposes I'm I'm genuinely interested 
in in knowing knowing that um so i, I don't know i i know i didn't really ask y'all no questions but if y'all wanted to chime in or if y'all had any kind of rebuttals or thoughts or, or questions or anything like that as far as like how it went uh you know feel feel free and for the and for the people on instagram before y'all go people on instagram um i'm about to hop off of here now but if you do want to come in and join the conversation or if you had any questions or if y'all had any feedback or if y'all just wanted to you know join be a fly on the wall listen participate whatever uh go to the link in my bio right now subscribe to the patreon and then you'll have access uh to the, to all of the zoom calls and everything like that man but this is kind of what we do you know what i'm saying bi-weekly we come on here we chop it up have these kinds of conversations um and yeah man so i, I hopefully i'll see y'all niggas over there i'm out of here with y'all all right Penelope, what up? That's the 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 hey. fucking set all this bullshit up. <laughs> but nah, it's funny because I talked, I actually I hit her up right after I got off of the call. And we probably we chopped it up for like maybe like 30 or 40 minutes or something like that. Or whatever. And I was kind of telling her like how how the process was and, and how it went and everything. Did you end up uh did you end up setting another? Are you gonna stick with her? Or are you gonna I am gonna so you guys I am also booked with her. Um I am. I just do not know schedule wise what date for me to go forward with yet. But I am gonna go forward with her. Um and see, like I usually do my therapy dates on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but shit has been so hectic and then I'm going out of town for my birthday so I was like do I want to do a therapy session on my birthday or not like oh, that's usually therapy day but yeah I'm gonna stick with it and ride it out um for the next few weeks and see what happens oh, then at the end of all of this I whenever you come back to Atlanta you and I both can have a uh to do another episode based on our experience yeah that's yeah I'm I'm with that that sounds good I'm so good. I'm honestly like this is gonna give me, <laughs> even though it is for me. Like I, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I was I was low key a little bit upset that you can't record. Uh, I wanted to record the, the whole fucking therapy session, but it's her Zoom call, so I don't. First think of all, I, you can't record it because of HIPAA. There, there's that. Well, if it's okay with me, you know what I'm saying. But I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't. I was just saying. I was thinking while I was talking to her on the Zoom. I was like, damn, like this would probably be some super dope content. But then I was like, you know what? Nah, like this is actually some private shit that should be private or whatever. So then I was. Just, I was about to say, can you not think about content for like two seconds? Nah, not really. <laughs> he never, he never for not thirty think. minutes. Some <laughs> might need to talk to her about that, Jackson. <laughs> right the fuck yeah i mean maybe maybe she's like she she's super cool so so okay so the funny thing about this is is that jack's really just he was like he, all the, i found him three therapists right all that i felt like okay this was this will work this will work the third therapist the one he actually chose was not the one that i sent him i actually kept her for myself Jax calls me at fucking nine o'clock in the morning and is like, you found the most attractive therapist that you could have ever found. And I'm like, what? Like, I didn't even think that you would think that they were attractive. Like, and he's like, at first, wait, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me talk about that too. Right. I think it's, I think that it's funny that y'all really, y'all like really think that I have like this, like super specific type or whatever, because the first, the first out of the three, honestly, I was most, I was most impressed with the first chick, and the first chick was just like, she was a, she was just brown skin, she had glasses and she had like, uh, she had locks, like blonde locks or some shit, and she had on a, and she had on a, uh, <laughs> and she had on like a, she had on like a blazer or some shit like that, because I get, I'm, I'm assuming it was like a LinkedIn profile or something like that. And, uh, and, you know, she was just, she was just real pretty in the face or, or whatever. And then the second girl was like a light skinned girl. She had like the quintessential, like natural girl hairstyle. It was like a part in the middle and a small poof here and a big poof there. And then the third girl was the one that I ended up picking. She was just another light skinned chick, curly hair or whatever. And, but out of the three, like, 
like I would have if I had to pick one like on some dating shit, I would have picked the first girl like the and I just think that it's always so funny because she was like, really? Like, I didn't think that you'd find them attractive at all because I think your type is X, Y, and Z. And I was like, I've been trying to tell y'all niggas for the longest, like, attractive is attractive. And that shit just comes in so many different, you know, like, flavors and styles and packages and shit like that. But anyway, now she's talking. I don't think she hear it. I don't think she's paying attention. I'm I'm done talking, so you could, you can continue. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't even paying attention. Um, no, you good. I was just, I was just saying about how I thought it was funny that. Uh, oh, that but the type thing. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely was like, "What the fuck, yo?" Like I was like, it was so early. I was like, "Checks, man, look, you know, I don't know." No. So, um, ended up sending him so. So we went back and forth about this like for a few hours and it's like midday and I'm like, well, did you reach out to anybody? And I sent him the third chick and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. She does like a little icebreaker meet and greet type ordeal for free. And so I was like, so go ahead and reach out whatever day works on your schedule. Jax doesn't do it. I ended up making it for him as I was making it for myself. And then we chopped it up afterwards and I didn't think that she would be a fit for Jax because she says like she does she is heavy on attachment styles and childhood trauma and this is any other so like this is what she put on the psychology today website so that's why I was like all right more for me not for him who has this whole sexual issue thing going on but then when he called me he was like so excited and like so into it and was like that went really well and you know she's cute and I and Jax believes that it has to be done this way, like a complete exorcism. Like, you know, he talks I was just talking about him. this too. That's so funny. Before yeah. you came on, I literally was just saying all of that. But like, yeah. and it wasn't honestly, like honestly, me recognizing that she was an attractive, like on the Zoom screen, that went out the window after like five seconds. Cause then it really was about like you, you I mean, Nick, I'm referring to you, but like, you know, like I'm, when it comes to like the real shit, like I'm, I'm not worried about none of that other other shit. Like you know what I'm saying. So after that first five seconds, I was like, oh shit, she looked like her picture. She she nice looking or whatever. Then when she asked me, so tell me about yourself, I was like, all right, <sighs> let's get into the let's get into the my that shit. part was that you know part was awkward. That part was really awkward because she was like, tell me about your life between zero and five. And you're like, how the fuck am I supposed to know what the fuck I was doing at three? Yeah, that caught me off guard too. But you know, but you like the reason why, even though she is like, uh, she, I guess her focus is more so, she said, relationships and childhood, like trauma from birth to five years old. But the reason I feel like um, maybe she could still be beneficial is because it's because she deals in relationships, right? So, like, part of, Part of why, I, like, relation, relationships or lack thereof for me, I feel like has also played a big part in, you know, why I view sex the way that I view it. Because I, re, I, I do remember from, like, when I was in high school, part a, a big part, I was one of those, like, I was one of those virgins who I was like, I'm not going to lose my virginity until, like, I'm, I, I want to lose it with someone that I, that I love. Like, I was that virgin guy like you know what i'm saying in high school so indirectly like that had everything to do with relationships because if i wasn't in one then i wasn't gonna have i wasn't gonna have sex i didn't want to just i didn't want to lose my virginity to just anybody like i wanted it to be i wanted it to mean something like you know what i'm saying i wanted it to mean something i wanted it to be significant i wanted it to be important or whatever and then i think when i got to when i got to college and I kind of realized that in order for me to focus on ball, probably not going to be in a relationship. Then my mindset kind of shifted from like, well, you know, it don't, it don't got to be with somebody that I love. It's, you know, if I'm feeling like having sex on that day, then I guess I'm going to just go ahead and do it. And then it went from that to me getting into a relationship, like maybe like my third year in school, like 
shortly after I lost my virginity, I think I got into a relationship like the follow, like the that summer or some shit like that, right? And that was a whole new learning experience because now I'm in a serious relationship, but I'm still sexually inexperienced. You know what I mean? So I didn't, I didn't really get a chance to take my like my my trial my trials and tribulations I wasn't I didn't get to follow that path like with different people you know what I'm saying so like and it's weird because like when you're in a relationship and you're and you're you know faithful in your relationship you might actually be able to become a good sex partner to that person because you're trying to learn them specifically but then after the relationship is over you realize, or I realized, or I thought that, okay, well, damn, like now that that's over, I'm still kind of inexperienced in terms of just sex in general to get back out here and trying to please, like trying to be like a general sexual pleaser, even though every woman is different. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was, I, it was just something again, over overthinking shit, like, you know what I'm saying? But that was just, so I do think that relationships is going to play a, her expertise in relationships, hopefully is going to play a, a part in maybe her being able to uh, see some things that maybe I haven't, I haven't seen or I haven't considered yet. So that's one of the bigger reasons why I did want to go ahead and, and stay with her. And I think the fact that we just got that prerequisite conversation out of the way, I don't really want to have to do that all over again. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that we kind of, we had a decent conversation. Um, I was, I was telling Penelope, the one thing that I didn't like so much was I could kind of tell when she was um, almost like asking her like therapist questions, they didn't come off as like, they, they weren't interjected in the conversation. It was almost like she had like a card of questions like to the right of her laptop and she was trying to pick out a good moment to which, all right, let me ask question number one. All right, let me ask question number two, as, a, as opposed to making it feel like we're just having a conversation and she's just like slipping these questions in. And, and I don't know if that was just me recognizing that I, I saw what she was doing that. And maybe I just, I wanted it done differently, but then I'm new to therapy. So I don't know if maybe that's the way that it's supposed to happen either. So um, I, I, I tried not to make that such a, such a big deal, but what it, what it came off as was like, uh, maybe she wasn't, it came off, you know what it came off as I wanted to feel like she was smarter than me. And I, and I didn't get that right away. And I don't mean, and I don't, I, I know that sounds crazy, but I wanted to like, I don't know. I just, I wanted to feel like, uh, I wanted to feel like she knew it. Like, like I know what the fuck I'm doing. Nigga, follow my lead. You're overthinking and, again, but continue. I mean, I get it. I'm just saying, I'm just, as she was analyzing me, I'm analyzing the whole situation. Cause I've never, I've never been in the situation before. And I just, I don't know. I didn't know what to expect. So that's why my brain was probably just like all over the place. But, um, I'm gonna stick with her. I say all of that to say I'm gonna stick with her, and we're gonna see what the where the process goes and shit like that. For I think you would expect something like that. Like, all right, she's gonna ask me these generalized questions, and then it's gonna become more personalized as we move forward. Just like any relationship. So, what do you like doing for fun? Where's your favorite vacation spot? What's your favorite color? What's yeah. your birthday? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all of those right. things are. That's like the generalized get to know you type of shit yeah that makes yeah sense. I, I would i would think that you should expect that and not be turned off by it because she's just trying to get a general idea of who you are she don't know you i know i i just <laughs> no i know I, I know exactly what you mean um i don't know uh you're right though i mean you're you're you're, you're right um and it wasn't a big deal it just i guess it just threw me off because i'm 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 thinking that we were I didn't know what to think, but then when I started talking, I'm just thinking, all right, now we in we just in a conversation, conversation mode. 
But uh, you like so I mean, it, it, it makes <laughs> it makes sense, bro. <laughs> no, it, I mean it makes sense. It, it makes sense though, because she don't like you said she don't she don't know me. Like who who is this nigga? Like this yeah, fake man. podcaster. Who is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I was gonna I'm say going like, here with these tattoos and this beard and hat. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I was gonna say like for for any of you guys who who are in who are currently in therapy, um, is that is that normally how it how it starts? Like, is that normally do they try to have like a do they try to make it seem casual or do they try to purposely make it seem very formal? See, mine did it formal when we first. Um did it like like she did like what you said I can tell like she's asking her therapy questions um but now because I think because I'm used to her I think I just it just it is what it is I just answer her questions or I don't have an answer for it which I normally don't um <laughs> but she <laughs> but she does the same thing it's like I can tell like we'll talk at first but I can tell like she has to interject her questions that I have to answer that like I said I normally don't have the answer for I got you what did you, um, did you like, did you, how did you pick your, how did you pick your therapist? Like, what was like your vetting system? Um, so I specifically also wanted a black female, um, cause I, I have nothing to talk to a white woman about. You don't know what I have to go through cause you are a Caucasian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I didn't. When I did it, and this, I feel like this is bad for me to say, well, I don't know. So I wanted someone that was like at least 10 years or more into it because I didn't want to be like somebody's experiment per se. Mm -hmm. So I did look and see like how long they've been doing it. Um, I did look and see if like, because they don't really tell you too much about your therapist, but I like tried to find like a common ground-ish. Like she went to Spelman and I, and I wanted to go to Spelman. So like I just found like a common... So, so I can find like an icebreaker kind of. So okay. that I feel like that was kind of weird, but I was like, well, at least I can say like, oh, cool, you went to Spelman. Like, how was that like? And she answered the question for me. Um, I didn't want anybody like super serious because y'all know I'm goofy and loud. So I didn't want no one who couldn't handle my personality, I guess. Um, so, Cause so I went through four people before I found my therapist. Okay, that was gonna be my that was gonna be my next question because Penelope was like, "Yeah, I'm on therapist like number seven or some shit." I hope this will work. <laughs> so I was supposed. To, oh my god, <laughs> three. Okay, three. <laughs> but uh, now I was gonna say like, I what the ones that you didn't stick with, like what made you say like, okay, this person is probably not for me. Um, the first one. I remember that first lady, she she was saying, I know it's not her fault, but she was triggering me. Like she was saying, she was talking to me as if she was my mother and me and my mom don't have the best relationship. And I told her that, I was like, hey, like this, I'm noticing like these things, like when I leave therapy, I'm angry. I'm not like, like I don't want to come back. Oh. Um, and she was like, why? And I would tell her like, well, you're doing this, this, and this, like my mom. She's like, oh, okay, that means it's working. I don't want to leave therapy mad. So no, it's not working. Um, so that's why I stopped doing her. And then the other ones, the other two, they seemed like they didn't really care. Like they, I felt like I was a client and they just had to hurry up and get through the session. I didn't like that. I but um, the one I have right now, she's like more, like I could tell like she writes down what I said last week and she wants to, she'll give me a homework assignment and she'll make sure I'm, tr I'm doing it. Or she'll like text me and check on me like, hey, did you do your homework assignment that I gave you? So that's why I stuck with her. So she's like really constant. It's like she genuinely cares about my progress. And she, if I slip a little bit, she can tell like by the answer, the question and I go in there with the answer. Mm -hmm. If I don't have an answer for it, she's like, okay, you're not doing your homework. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. So okay. that's why I stuck with her. How do you, uh, how do you know, like feeling angry at the end of a session is a bad thing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what, what, what feelings do you think that, that for the majority of the time that you should have when a session is done, that makes you feel like you're, you're progressing? So when we talk about my parents and my relationship now with my therapist that I have now that I like, I'm not angry. 
So she'll tell me like, okay, because I'm I don't okay. I'm finna tell you my business. We family anyway. So I don't like to sit in my feelings. I was never like a because my because my parents, the whole thing was if you felt something, you have to like sweep it under the rug. So that's what I do. I'm, that's what I was doing. So with the first lady, when she used to make me upset, like I I'm like, well, I feel like I shouldn't be mad for like a like I I hang out because y- y'all want to learn about my feelings. Okay, cool. But I'm mad for like a whole day. Like I don't want to sit and be mad about some stuff my mom did to me 10 years ago for a whole day. Like I think that's too much. Mm-hmm. But now my therapist now she'll like have me sit and analyze, okay, why are you getting upset? Why does that trigger you? Why is there anything your parent can do about that now? No. So this is how you cope with it. The other therapist, the first one would just would just have me talk about it. I'd be pissed off about it. And then she doesn't leave me with any tools to go through. I have nothing to cope with it. I got you. I got you. So I was like, no, girl, I don't want to be mad for a whole day about some, something my mom did to me when I was 13. That doesn't make sense. Got you. What about um, what about you, uh, Penelope? I'm, I'm not sure what I know. Vic, he, he probably has an answer, too, because I know for a fact that he goes to therapy as well. But like, how do you know when this was a, you know, this was a good session or not nah, like this? This session wasn't that that good. Like, what's the feeling that you have at the end that you like? What's your metric system on how you how you measure that? And this is for whoever. And say that again. So I'm all right. So we're talking about like in, in terms of therapy, right? Like, how do you measure once the like once your session is, is done, is over? How do you how do you make the decision on saying like, yo, that was a really great session today versus ah, that that session ain't really that ain't really helped me today. Like that ain't really do nothing for me today. Like, how do you, how do you come to that conclusion? Uh, I, I come through it through like the break, like, like the way I come know it's a great session is when I thought of something, when she made me think of something I didn't know before, or I came to the session discovering something on my own. To be honest, the last month, I've had like breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. And those breakthroughs are more like I like something I did during the day. And I'm like, oh snap, the reason why I do this is because of that. Like those are things that happened to me. Like I want to say the last month or two, like I've had like deep sessions with the because the way I I I think a lot on my own a lot of times and I'll bring it to the to the session at least the last two months that's what's been happening but the way I know the way I look at my therapist is that it's like a pick and roll it's like I I she got I got the ball and I throw it to her and she 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 direct me as to like what I'm thinking she'll correct it she won't correct it but she'll she'll corral me into another thought to understand what I, you know, what it is that I'm taught to, to help me process what it is that I discovered, so to speak. Like, and, and it's funny because today I was thinking about it. Like I was listening to an old podcast I had and I was like, yo, I'm a, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but I'm like, yo, I'm a good orator. Or, I think it's called orator. Mm-hmm. Like someone who's able, like, and I rem- and when I thought about that this morning, I was like, there was a session I had with her one time. That shit was like inception. You know how inception <laughs> where it was like a thought within a thought and yeah. another thought. And it was just like, I was sitting there breaking it down to her. And it was just like, bro like it's layers on layers on layers and it was just it it just it 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 really it didn't throw me off but it really made me think like damn like this is deep or whatever the case is but to be honest um i know that my session was good when i walk away like yo i ain't know that like i ain't gonna lie like i got choked up like a month ago and that was the first time i ever got choked up and Mm -hmm. i got choked up um, I, I don't mind sharing it. I got choked up because with me, I always have this thing where I feel like I'm going 
three steps forward, but five steps backward. And I think with me, what I realized is that it was simply a thing that my mom told me when I was a kid. Because my mom had me at 40. And for some strange reason, like, I remember probably was five. She was like, one of the reasons she had me was to take care of her. But I internalized it like the only reason you had me was to take care of you. And what I got from that was that it's like you want to succeed, but you're holding yourself back from succeeding. Like every time you make a stride, you're holding yourself back from succeeding because you you resent the fact that that's the only reason you have me. That may not have been the, the way she like meant it, but that's how I took it. And as a result of why I took it, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like a part of you want to succeed to take care of your mom, but a part doesn't because you're like, man, that's the only reason you had me. And not mm -hmm. because you had like a deep, like, I want you only, and, it, and it's, it, it was a mind trip because at the same time I want to succeed, but at the same time, I, I you know, I hold like, unconsciously hold myself back and that session it was weird because you know you, you ever been talking to someone and then you're talking and then all of a sudden you hear that little you feel a little crack in your voice mm -hmm. it was like where the hell did that come from <laughs> like, like, like you know what I mean yeah, and the yeah. more I talked was the more I got like choked up about it and and it was weird because I got choked up about it the weird part about it, it really became a thing of the thing that I was scared of. It's like survivor's remorse. It was almost like you holding yourself back. You're all, it's like you holding yourself back because of, you know, the fact that you said the only reason you have me is for that. And I'm holding myself back because I feel like if I do succeed, I'm going to leave my loved ones behind. Mm, it's, yeah. a, it's a mind trick. So little discovery like that, that's when I know I had a good like session because I never thought about that. You know what I mean? I never like, and another thing she said that tripped me out too is that she was like, because I find it interesting that I go to therapy, right? And a good portion of my therapy was issues that I had with my pops. But now that I have a great relationship with my pops and now I got that discovery one thing I realized is like and then she said it she said you know what boys or children tend to hold their mother so much on a pedestal that it's easy to shit on my pops about what he didn't do but it's harder to like to 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 address what your your mom did like it's really hard because you hold your mom on such a pedestal and you never want to think negatively about your mother. You're like you just never because in your mind you're like, nah, she took care, she held it down. And I found it interesting that I was shitting on my pops for like almost two years. But the one time I had a discussion about my mom and got choked up. Mm. Like and, and and it was just very interesting. And she even said it, she said. I've seen this from the second session you had with me, but the only reason I didn't say anything is because children tend to hold their parent and mothers on a pedestal. And it's hard to get them to take that, take them off that pedestal so that you can, you know, properly analyze what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. But that's just one example of something that happened with me that that whatever. But the best sessions is when something like that where I didn't expect to get choked up. I didn't expect to like come to a conclusion. I didn't expect a lot, but yeah. <clears throat> it came out. I, I'm telling you the long winded answer, but it came <laughs> out. But, yeah, yeah. But to be honest, like I said, I can't like late, these last two months, I keep fork, like stumbling on like new things about myself and I'm like oh shit like and then she would direct you the way you think or whatever the case is so that's how I know when when I come on like I've had so much good session that I thought like maybe that's what I should put on that uh, that podcast that I've had on my own maybe I should start putting like posts 
therapy commentary on that podcast. Like I thought that thought of that. Like maybe that's what I should do. But that's yeah. the best session to be honest. Like when you found out something about yourself that you just didn't know before. Yeah. And I, I think I think that's a great idea because I I already know that that's what I'm probably gonna be doing myself. Like you know what I'm saying? Um I think I think you should especially especially because like I'm a I'm a rookie I'm a rookie at therapy shit and you a vet at therapy shit so it's probably gonna be easier for you to even recognize like you know what I'm saying like when when you've had like a breakthrough or when you've when you've had a a good session like you know what I'm saying because I, I I think part of part of the challenge for me is kind of gonna be uh because potting up until this point kind of has been therapy for me so i'm gonna have to mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to try to figure out and how to distinguish like a good a good pot like how how can i how can i say this uh when i'm talking on the microphone sometimes that sometimes that happens where you're talking yourself through a story or you're talking yourself through a scenario or you're talking yourself through something that you've already experienced, but now you're looking back in it, back on it in hindsight. And you do start to like in real time, start to discover things about yourself, right? Like that, that has happened to me while I'm actually recording. But I think the difference is like, I've never been, I don't know if anyone else has like how you said has like kind of corralled me into forcing me to look at something and process it in a different way in real time you know what i mean so i want to try to i don't like my one of my other goals i feel like i don't want to get on there and, and speak with her as if i'm <clears throat> excuse me as if i'm podcasting but it's going to be tough because like when i'm podcasting i'm literally just talking about my real life you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I want, but I want to get something from it though. Like I want to get something from it other than views or other than likes. I want to, I want to, I want to get some sort of growth in it. But I think that might be difficult for me because I am so like everything that I'm gonna tell her, if I haven't You're already, gonna tell the podcast. <laughs> well, no, but I'm not that I'm going to, but I have already. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like just in our, in our, uh, in our little, uh, prerequisite, you know, conversation, like we talked about briefly, we talked that we touched on, um, my virginity, kind of like how I, not how I lost my virginity, but why I'm even here in seeking, seeking therapy. It's all stems from, the thoughts that I have because of the fact that I lost my virginity at 20. So I kind of like gave her some background on that, which I feel like I've talked about millions of times on the pod. Uh, we briefly, briefly discussed the fucking relationship with Voldy and how that was a big, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A, a, bi a big factor, just mentally, sexually, like trying to move forward because of those incompatibilities, you know what I'm saying? Inside and outside of bear, like, so I didn't, I didn't, obviously I didn't have, I only talked to her for 30 minutes. So clearly I couldn't tell her the, the whole entire thing, but I'm saying like, I gave her bits and pieces of my real life, but simultaneously I'm giving her bits and pieces of the pod because my pod, like the pod is my real life as well. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I just, I, but I, for, for me, I want to, I want to be able to like a successful pod for me is if a whole bunch of people see it, if I get motherfuckers, if I get new people to sign up, if I, if I see my Patreon numbers going up, if I get a lot of people in the Zooms, like that's a good pod for me, but a good pod for me might not put me in a good mental space because of the shit that I'm talking about. But with the therapy, I want to be able to maybe, I want to be able to tell my same stories, but leave the session not, not being men mentally like fucked. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you can't really avoid certain things because certain certain it's kind of like Clarissa what she said like you know you bring up something my mom did when I was five and now I'm, I'm 
I'm fucked up for the rest of the day. But here's the thing. You you really can't uh, avoid that. You know what I mean? Like, that's part of the, that's part of the process. Like, mm-hmm. like that's really part of the process. There, there's going to be subjects you bring up that throws you off and puts you in a, a bad space, you know? And podcasting and therapy, I'm going to share something I never really shared with nobody <laughs> like that. But it's something I've been thinking about. I know people ask, like, why is it, at least with the podcast, my, what happened with? I don't know. Say, say that again. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing Don. I was like, yo, what happened? <laughs> but um, I never really shared something until recently. Like, you don't, I've never really shared this. One of the reasons why a lot of episodes ain't really coming from Avenue H, I realized this probably two months ago. Me and my ex, I realized that after I came from that session with you, actually. The reason why it's hesit- I'm hesitant to, because part of me loves doing the podcast with my ex-wife because we get to, you know, tell each other, you know, go down things that happen between us. But one of the reasons why I realized I'm so reluctant with that podcast, I'm telling stories about hurtful things that, and and I, this is kind of the same thing what C was telling you. That's really what made me start thinking. I'm telling stories about things that happened to me. And of course we're laughing, but I'm really telling stories about things that happened to me and that hurt me to the person who hurt me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and that's really a mind fuck to be honest and what happens with me is that sometimes yeah it feel good you letting it out sometimes it don't because same person that did those things is the one that I'm talking to like I'll give you an example sometimes I'll say something and she don't remember it not that I care if she remember it because we're over, but it also, because some people deal with pain by erasing certain memories. Yeah. And one thing that used to bother me is sometimes we would talk about something, bring certain things up. She remembers a lot, but a lot of things she forget. And it's part of me used to bother me because I'm like, you're, you forget it because it's painful and I get it. But that still was a big chunk of my life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and I don't have that luxury of forgetting it because it was painful. So it's this weird dynamic of, you know, this person I've known all my life, but it's kind of like what C said, that time where she talked about being, was it sexually, something happened that was bad. Mm-hmm. And then she told you I, I was joking about it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same thing with me. I think it was. A, I'm I, think, I think it was a story. She was telling a story about how um, some dude that she went to go link up with, or some dude she was dating, uh, dating, ended up like hitting her with a. I forget what what he hit her with, but she ended up like losing her tooth or or something. He, oh he yeah, knocked, yeah, yeah. He knocked her uh, her teeth out, or whatever. And it was a a horrible story. But I think I think what happened when she was telling the story is that we knew I mean, and, and you know, because like, you know, like you could just tell like what the energy in the room gives off, you know what I'm saying? So in that in those kind of like moments, like Juice and I were listening, we know that it's a horrific story. We know that it's some bullshit, but we're also following the lead of the of the storyteller, which is C. So, mm-hmm. and the way that C's telling the story and the way that honestly, the way that we all tell our traumatic stories based on like the type of podcast that it is, she's telling a story with a comedic back, you know, back, backdrop. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like she's telling this mm-hmm. horrible story, but because she's so many years removed from it, she's trying to, she's trying to bring some comic relief to the story. So we pick up on that energy 
So now we kind of, ha- we have the green light to go ahead and, and get our, you know, get our laughs out, get our, get our jokes out. You know what I'm saying? Like all the while we still know that it's fucking terrible. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But the person who went through the terrible experience, it's almost like, you know what, if they're over it or if they're seemingly over it enough to joke about it, then then we then we have the green light to laugh about it and joke about it too. Because at the end of the day, this is our friend. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But who who knows what kind of I mean, even she said it, like after that episode was done, she kind of had to like step back and be like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, that's not, that's not, it wasn't funny then. It's really not funny now. Like, you know what I'm saying? But here she is like trying to take a a moment and make it funny because in reality, my nigga, like that's what comedians do. Like that's what entertainers Mm -hmm. do. Like they take the darkest parts of their life and try to use it and mold it and shape it into helping other people by making it funny, by making it lighthearted, by making it relatable, by making it digestible. You know what I'm saying? But by doing all of those great things for other people, it's like, well, what are you doing to yourself though in the process? Yeah, I I get it, man, because I get it. And, you know, yeah, I get it. Because like I said, I ain't realized it till recently. Like you, you're talking about your life, because that's what like to be a creative is to tell your life story and the most painful ones in a digestible way and sometimes comedic way, mm-hmm. you know, so that other people could learn. And like I said, even with her, you know, my ex-wife, we do that, but. One thing I learned, man, you can't heal in the same if I'm you got sick in, bro. Mm. And that's the reason it's like, it never hit me why, like, I, you know, it was so difficult to come up with stuff with her. But I can't heal in that same environment, you know what I mean? Like, it sounds great that you can get over it and both of y'all could sit on the table together, realistically speaking. We're talking about real life situations that change both of our lives. You know what I mean? Right. And you can't, you can't like, you have to be realistic with yourself on that. You know, I remember Charlie when we when we both came, he was like, "I don't got no podcast with my ex wife, but that would be weird." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. it's true. Like, it would be weird. And to go back to what you're saying. I don't feel I don't want to take up everybody's time if someone else wants to speak, but you see the same thing you said? Me and my cousin, that's like my outside of like a couple people, that's my dog. We grew up together. That's like my best, best friend, right? Recently, he, you know, I noticed he's been keeping his distance for the last year. Like I'll hit him up, he don't hit me up, but you know, that's my little cousin. I'm still gonna reach out whether you hit me up or not. Sometimes I get pissed and don't talk to him. But for the most part, I whatever. Recently, we having a conversation, we joking because that's a conversation, that's the kind of personality he has, kind of like C. Mm. He's a bro, he if he here in the room with you, he will make you cry laughing without trying. Mm. And that's and he brings that out of me too. Recently, he told me, I'm gonna be real with you. One of the reasons why I'll be keeping my distance with you is so I've had some painful experiences in life and we, you know, hashing it out. Cause I know his base was his, my uncle, his father's my uncle. So I know the painful experiences he's talking about. And he's like, we, I'm telling you, but we laughing, but deep down, it's not a laughing matter. <laughs> you know what I right. mean? Right, right. But because he's my cousin, because we both, have a comedic personality we make light of it and we joke right without me realizing yo homie like it's funny but it's not <laughs> you know what i mean like i be mean? yeah. like <laughs> like it's funny because it's only funny because of our personality we'll make a joke out of anything like he's one of them dudes we can make a joke out of the most tragic situation that should not be joked about but at the end of the day, it those things like matter. And he he told me that. 
And ever since then, you know, we start talking more. And I'm like, if I told him, I'm like, yo, my, my bad. I ain't know if I, we were doing that. It's just, you know my life. I know your life. We've been rocking with each other since five years old, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But. Yeah. I, um, we can't. Oh, my, I'm sorry. My, my bad. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go. My fault. Oh, I was just, I was looking in the, <laughs> I just happened to glance over in the fucking chat, and I see this nigga Trav here. I know his, his picture not up. I don't know if he at work or not. But nah, bro, like, chime in. We know, we all know how you feel about therapy, but I'm still, I'm still open to hearing, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what your opinions are, what your thoughts are. So. He gonna be like, yo, yo, shake it off, man. <laughs> that's what he, that's what he gonna say. It's like, yo, man, they don't make them like they used to, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what Trav gonna say, bro. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. But nah, but but Trav, yo, if you, I don't know if you at work or not, but if you could, if you could chime in, my nigga, chime in, chime in, bro. Don't get fired to do it. But if you, if you're available, my nigga, we would love to hear what, what you have to say. Yo, what's really good? Yo, what's popping, my nigga? Yo, shit, chilling. Uh, actually, getting ready for a date. So I was just, we got listen while. Uh, oh, damn! Who you? Damn, nigga, who you back in? <laughs> Back in Houston, or this somebody new? Nah, this somebody new. I'm back, I'm back in the loop. What the hell? Yeah, yeah I'm back in the loop. Yo, what was that, Clarissa? Like, what was? That? I know that shit sound like a transformer, nigga. Yeah, so I'm just listening as I'm putting your shit iron in the clothes, putting creases, putting creases in the flats. You know me. <laughs> Yo, let me see them Stacy Adams though. What them Stacy Adams look like? Do <laughs> <laughs> not wear Stacy Adams. Hell no. <laughs> but nah, good. Uh, nah, but I've been in and out. I was coming in. I guess. Uh, I guess you finally started the therapy. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, I had I had like a consultation. Uh, discussion. It was supposed to be like fifteen minutes. It ended up being a, being about a half an hour or so um so now i'm gonna have to i'm gonna schedule like a, a like a for real one hour session um probably for probably for next week oh okay well you know as a friend i'll, I'll wish you the best and you know me and my my perspective so i'll uh i'll be uh respectful on that too <laughs> but, you know hey, hey if it works for you all all power to you real talk the nigga said, "If you like it, I love it, man." <laughs> I know. <laughs> that nigga said, "That nigga said, nigga, that's a bullshit with your crazy ass." But go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, but you've been, but, you, but you've been talking about doing it for quite some time, so you know. That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, what I'm saying, way to follow through with it. You know, what I'm saying, just like me, uh, just like me talking about working out for quite some time. So eventually, I'm gonna follow through with it, hundred percent. All right, nigga. Well, I'm. <laughs> I'm gonna keep you posted. I'm a, I'm a, I'm glad that you in here though, because I'm what I'm hoping. I mean, obviously, outside of just what I'm hoping to gain from it for myself, but I'm hoping that I could be like an inspiration to maybe people who are on, who actually are on the fence um, about therapy. You know and I, uh, I, I talked about it a lot, like you said. So it, I feel like it was just kind of time for me to, you know, to do exactly what I kind of been talking about as opposed to just like talking about the shit forever so you know what i mean so fuck it like i'm gonna I'm be in there i'm gonna try to stay consistent i'm gonna try to um and i'm gonna really try to like i'm not gonna be one of the people who is going to just be like you know what like all right i'm gonna go i know this shit ain't gonna i know this not gonna do nothing i know it's not gonna work but i'm gonna go just to like shut y'all niggas up like nah like I, if i'm gonna be in there and i'm gonna be spending other people's money and then eventually spending my own money like I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna make that shit worth it. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh it's good to have an open mind when you approach something, I'll say extremely new. It's good, it's good to have an open mind when you try something extremely new. Oh, but you know what the thing I really I don't think it's extremely new. It's it's new, but it's not extreme because like I said before, when I get on here and talk. It's honestly, it's therapeutic for me. I just don't have the real time feedback, and I don't have the real time feedback from professionals. Like you know, what I'm saying, like the conversation you and I had, nigga. Like you know, we talk about this shit, you know, every now and then. Like, it's it's dope to have a dope circle. Like you know, what I'm saying, like you, Mike, Carry, um, you know, and and you know everybody else. But 
at the same time, like y'all niggas is not professionals. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like at the same time, if I came in here in the Zoom and I tell everybody on here about my, about my, the things that I'm anxious about or the things that I'm nervous about or the things that I'm insecure about, like y'all could pat me on the back. Y'all could build me up. Y'all could give me motivational speeches and all that shit, but y'all not professionals though. So, you know what I'm saying? So like a professional might be able to give me some sort of feedback that, well, but we will be that too <laughs> but you know what i'm saying but like a um a professional might be able to give me like clarissa was talking about earlier i will be able to at least i will be able to leave that conversation with more than just the words that were given to me like you know what i'm saying i'll be able to hopefully leave the conversations now with tools on how to actually improve with tools instead of people just telling me like yo you gotta stop overthinking maybe i'll leave a conversation with tools on how to actually stop overthinking in order how to live in the moment but you feel me so i think it's like those little nuances. Say that I'll, again. I'll, say, I'll say this and i know we haven't we don't have in-depth conversations about therapy for obvious reasons on my behalf <laughs> but um, when you say the word professional or when I think when you're going to seek a professional, and I don't know if you have, I'll just say, I hope you have, because again, we ain't spoke on it, but so I'm just speaking generically where, do the, uh, I guess, appropriate research, right? I guess where, and I'm just speaking off the surface, right? Where I kind of just raise an eyebrow when an individual, quote unquote, a professional who, and I'm just saying as an example, who's never been married, but yet is, a marriage counselor. You, you know what I'm saying? So again, for anybody or for you particularly who's seeking whatever therapy it is, and I, know, I don't know what kind of being spoke on it, but hope that they can relate in some sense. Because see, what makes our circle dope is that we all relate. And then although, you know, we come from a similar background, we are still open-minded. I'm not so much as much as everybody else in our group, but still. <laughs> We're all, we're all transparent with each other and, you know, objective with each other. I mean, if, right. if somebody's on bullshit in the crew, we call out bullshit amongst our crew, you know, me and whoever else. So, but we have, have that, if you want to call it that, uh, that experience in life to where we've dealt with enough bullshit to call out bullshit, or if we've seen enough positivity or if we have crew members that are married you know what I'm saying? And then we can go for some marriage pers perspective if we're trying to get married or those who have children. But then, I don't know, forgive me, but the the academic aspect, I'm not knocking them becoming a professional based on the academic aspect, but I would, I would hope that there's some life aspect involved to where they can give you perspective on it. So again, whatever kind of therapy is, whether if it's on some mental shit, on some sex shit, I mean, that's just like a virgin trying to be a sex therapist. You know what I'm saying? Like, God bless your imagination and what you read and porn you watch, but it's kind of hard to give that perspective to another if you're not involved or don't have the experience. My my personal opinion. So I got you. I hear you. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. But like like I said, nigga, until you until you actually step foot in the in the therapist ring, I guess you I'm gonna just have to give you book reports on, on how it how it was. Let, 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 let me know if the couch is comfortable, type of deal. If I need to lay on the couch, maybe I'll lay on the couch one day if it's comfortable. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot, man. <laughs> I, got, I got problems. I know it. This thing is stupid. Who you who's the who's the lucky gal? Do it, do uh, we know her? Say what? I said, do we know her? No, nah, no, nah, this is somebody do I met out and about being social. Um, okay. Yeah, Illinois chick. So I don't know. My luck hasn't been good with Illinois chicks, really. But you know me, I, I like I like pretty smiles. So I approached, and she seemed half ass intriguing. So yeah, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna go for uh for a drink, and we'll see what else happens. All right, that's what's up. <laughs> this nigga, this nigga stay with a date though, boy. I give you that, my nigga. This nigga. I just, I'm, I'm just I'm a social guy. That's all. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a social guy. I like meeting new people. And you know me, everybody I go out on a date with doesn't, might not end up being like a romantic interest. It just, you know, I go off the vibes. Okay. You, oh man, that's funny. 
You the man, bro. You that nigga. Nah, nah, not me. <laughs> yeah. not me so, so yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get dressed. Yes, I got some crease in the slacks. What you what you wear before you before you get out of here, nigga? Just let us know what what's. We'll say, what's the outfit looking like tonight, nigga? Oh my goodness! I got on some navy blue slacks, uh, with the uh, with a V neck, and then some uh, some black stations. This nigga for the life the for the life of me, this man will not just put on jeans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm have a fucking heart attack. I mean, <laughs> it's fucking like ninety six. Out here in St. Louis, nigga. So you decided to put on half a suit. So why the hell do you have on a V neck, my nigga? And you know fucking jeans, because you know my jeans fit. You know they're not. No, they flex. don't. So no, they don't. You know. Them shits don't fit. They're too fucking big. So yes, my jeans, my jeans are are they're loose. Fucking and parachutes with a damn crease in it. Got the Tim Duncan fix on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the Tim Duncan fix. <laughs> I did. I do not want to get Carissa upset tonight. Oh my god! You still my dog, but you be wearing some bullshit. Uh, Yo, yeah. <laughs> sixty pounds of fucking trash. But okay, oh, Bag, you be bagging these girls with it, those those fits on, or like, and then like, they don't. Yeah. Do, they, do you go on a second date normally with them, Travis? Wearing that bullshit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, you I'm said so oh. Sorry. No, I was trying to think like, what's my percentage on like second dates? Uh, I want to say about. Of this yeah, I want to say about solid, solid, probably fifty percent. If I'm being honest, yeah, fifty percent. If it's like, uh, where I want a second date. Now, sometimes I don't want a second date. It just depends on how the first date go. But like, if I want a second date and actually they want to go on another outing or chill or whatever, then. 50-50 where, you know, I'll get a second date with somebody I express interest in. Do you tell them you make $100,000 a year? You said, how old are they, bro? How oh, old are these you? chicks? Y'all are the worst, man. Let this man go get ready, man. That's, 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 not, that's, not, that's not, that's not, money is not first date conversation, in my opinion. But well, you tell not, us that how much you make at five million times. I'm just saying. That's not true, but okay. But you, that was, you know, he, he know what he know us though. Like we yo, how, that's true. how, how that's old true. are these girls though? That's that's what no. Oh, that's a good question. Me. No, I range from uh, uh I range from like 28 to 40. Uh, what's the oldest? I'll say maybe 40, 42. Okay, all right. I can't do these 25 year olds, you know, they want to you can't eat in peace. They gotta say, wait a minute, move your plate this way. They gotta take pictures and they always watch your mouth, watch your selfie. mouth. Watch your watch mouth. It, watch your mouth. Watch your I'm, mouth. I'm just forgetting. That's, that's one of my pet peeves on dates, man. Put the, put the phone down. Let's enjoy hey, each other. Like, hey, I ain't gonna lie. I'm with you. On, I'm with you on that, though. I'm not a. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a food picture taker. I'm not. Like, a, I'm let's enjoy the moment or each other. Like, you know, what I'm saying it's like no different than I forgot what comedian has said it, but when you go to a show or even a concert and you're just holding a phone or an iPad up. Or ninety percent of the show, I, and you, I, how are you really enjoying the show? Yeah, that's you know funny. So, yeah, that's just my two cents when it comes to you know we out, we on a uh, outing or whatever, having something to eat. Let's eat and enjoy each other. And you know if the phone rings and it's important, cool. But just to pick the phone up every six minutes, just because that's what the younger generation is used to. So it's she not it's taking a picture. Time. She takes a picture of them Stacey Adams, not her plate, and put you in the group chat. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Since you want to talk about 45-year-olds, I got to get on you real quick. But I hope you have a good date, though. For real, for real. <laughs> yeah, uh, y'all uh, I, I, I appreciate it. Do you scoot under the plate so they can, so she can make sure, like, <laughs> she take you... <laughs> hey, nah, that ain't a that ain't a trap move, nigga. That's some shit I do, nigga. I'm like, hold on, bitch. Hold on, bitch. <laughs> That's the shit I do, nigga. That's my move. Have fun, Trav. Yeah, I appreciate it. Jay Jackson on me. I, I, I got the flowers on deck. So. Oh, my God. Why do you keep doing this? You call me a gentleman. Jay, you got the flowers. <laughs> Let him have the flowers. It's okay. It's going to oh. have to compensate for how he's about to be dressed anyway. Wait, how, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. With, how, old is, how old is this uh, young lady? 30. 
All right, well, the Flowers is hit or miss. I don't, I don't know. They hit or miss. <laughs> why are they hit or miss, Jackson? Uh, bro. Yeah, why? Don't get triggered. Bro, if I trigger like, you, I'm sorry. Dog, like, could you just... Remember, re, all right. Remember, remember, remember. I know, remember, know the, where you go with this. The chick from New York, like, yeah, yeah bro. Like, I believe it alone, man. Like, it's just, it, it weird. I'm it glad weirds, you went there. It weirds a lot of women out. I'm just saying. Why? Like, no, it doesn't. Yes, it do. Not because all it, women, you know. What even I mean? though, like, 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 even though it's not like, don't get me wrong, right? It's an amazing gesture. It's a gentlemanly gesture. It's a, it's a nice guy gesture. But I'm just saying, like, it. Maybe this is just me, bro. Like, I'm, may, and th- maybe this is why I'm in in therapy. <laughs> but I just don't. I don't. A lot of the time, I don't trust that the stereotypical woman in today's era they not gonna look at flowers and and be like oh they're gonna look at flowers and be like oh this nigga's a simp this nigga is he no penelope what kind of flowers flowers you like penelope oh get her nigga here nigga (laughs) yo penelope what color what color penelope what color i don't think she can hear y'all you heard me she responded in the chat Oh, yeah, oh, oh, she only texted. She like, nah. I, can't my say eye, I got my now. eyes on. We talking. Don't even worry about it. It's all right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Sweetheart. Don't worry about it. I just right, right, like, hey. she's on the phone. <laughs> good, I mean, good luck. Good luck with the flowers, bro. That's just not a. I mean, I. Don't, I that's just me, though. I'm like I said. I, I'm not doing that shit no more. I'm not doing that. If my girl, if I get a girl and she like flowers. Flowers all day on Tuesday on, on Tuesdays and shit like that. But I like flowers, Jackson. You could bring me some flowers. Nigga, I just said if he, I, I like a, tulips. I like tulips. Nigga, don't we all? <laughs> God damn it. You <laughs> this motherfucker go tell about to bring me some flowers. I definitely you, I was definitely gonna go there with you mean. <laughs> <laughs> You over here, you better, man, you better tell, you over here trying to fuck Penelope, but you trying to get me to bring the fuck, and that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> Matter of fact, I don't even know how I missed that. Travis, if you're, I, I hope you're still here. That's exactly, that's exactly what I mean. You right? love me though. You, I'm your friend. You love me. Bring me but, flowers. I like Penel- it. But I'm just, but let's just, let's just stay with this scenario because it's actually perfect, right? So let's no, say, boy. let's say Penelope is a dude and I'm a dude, and we're both trying to talk to Nick. Nick wants to fuck Penelope, and Penelope don't got to bring her shit, but she see my goofy ass with the flowers, and she's receiving and accepting them shits with open arms and ain't going to give me no type of nothing. Look, Penelope's coming with the dick, and you there for the personality, so, you know, relax. That's what she's going to say. Oh, you so sweet. That's what she gonna say while she busted it wide open for the next dude. Like, right. get out of here. And then, that, and then he's gonna see the flowers on the nightstand. Like, those are beautiful. I'm gonna go, uh huh. Yo, I'm gonna give y'all a <laughs> funny story, bro. Like, what was it? Like three, three Thanksgiving? No, not three. Um, Valentine's ago, right? I was dealing with this shorty. He said Thanksgiving. <laughs> I almost, I don't know why I said that. I was dealing with this shorty. And she wanted me to take her out on Valentine's Day. But I was working. I'm like, yo, later on, I'll take you out. But I can't do it in the daytime. She ain't want to listen to me. <laughs> she, Some other dude was pressing her around that time. So mm-hmm. she uh, hit her out the blue. Yo, I want to take you on to this, that, and the third. I want to take you out. So he took her out. Then she told me. I, I was kind of like, what? Because I thought me and you were dealing with each other, but I didn't care. This is the foul thing she do, and this is the example of what you're saying. Why Shorty brought me an extra plate from that thing? She came to my crib and poured me an extra thing, man. I'm eating this dude's ravioli, and I'm like, <laughs> raw for that, bro. You raw. You can, you come to my crib 12 o'clock at night with some raviolis from the next dude, and that next dude is the flower dude. The dude who's like, yo, oh my God, you know, thank you. And he giving her flowers. Meanwhile, someone else is, is stuffing, giving stuffing her ravioli. 
<laughs> Yo, like I just felt like that was so disrespectful, man. And then like you, that was beyond busted, disrespectful. You busted down after that, after you ate that man, nigga. You, you, you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, bro. He ate this nigga ravioli and his yams. <laughs> like, but that's what that flower do. To, I, and I need y'all women to, to, to explain something to me. Uh-oh, Why no. is it when... Because I've heard this, and maybe I'm wrong, Nick. Let me know if I'm wrong. Not only Nick, Penelope. Why, why me? Why, why? What am I? That, the, I, just, I listen, <laughs> Penelope, any one of y'all. I'm why is it some whistleblower? <laughs> why is it... I be hearing these things where it's like, the guy I like, I'm not going to give the buns to. But the guy I don't like, I'm gonna get the buns to. And, and I, I don't know if y'all ever heard this. I've heard this on multiple occasions. I want an explanation for that. I've, I've been there. I I am that guy. I've heard it. I've never had that model or done anything like that. If I like you and I'm vibing with you, we fucking like it's that simple. If we got good energy, we connecting. There's no rifts. There's no negative. There's no I would like genuinely enjoying your company. I'm I'm gonna wanna fuck. Like I just am. If I'm looking at you that way, I just am. I, the guys that the the nice guys, if if we vibing, I'm fucking them too. But I'm not fucking somebody who's gonna make me feel bad about fucking you afterwards, you know? Like I've been in a situation where I had sex with somebody and the very next day I'm like, the fuck? What the what the fuck How did I do that for? How would that make you feel bad though? Like, what does that even? What does that look like? That looks like uh, narcissism. That looks like uh, you hit him up, like, "What's going on? What you doing later?" You know, or let's try to, you know, link up next weekend. Nah, I'm gonna be busy. That whole ghosting, like that. That what's the word? I can't even. I can't think. But it, it's like ghosting, but not ghosting. You know what I mean? But always busy. Just busy. At, right after you fuck. You, mm-hmm. Now you just always busy. But prior to this, you had all the fucking time in the world. You was chasing my ass down. You know, all of the, the all of the flowers and the gifts and the texts and the calls and the good mornings and the this and the that. You know what I mean? Like all of the things. But grand ri- grand right after, rising queen. Right. That shit. <laughs> But right after all of that, it's a dub. Like, uh, you know? Uh, damn. I damn. think for me, when I, I'm in ghetto as Walmart, y'all, sorry. But for me, I used to do that like when I was in my 20s, but I'm much older than you guys. And it was more of a dudes would be very honest about being on some whole shit. So if we didn't care about nobody and we had already heard that he good or we think he good, then yeah, I'm gonna just give it to him. But if it's somebody I really want to kick it with, not even in a relationship, but continually kick it with, then I'm gonna make him wait, a, not a little bit, but my ass, wait a little bit is like four weeks. But I mean, it just to each his own. That's something that's childish. If I'm feeling you, or if I'm not feeling you, if I want to fuck, I'm gonna fuck, period. Right. right. I mean, like I think a- it comes down to judgment though. If you feel judge, you ain't gonna fuck with me. Right. You know that me. part. But exactly. why would the this is the thing like the guy that you like, and if he likes you, why would he judge you if he like you? Like, you know what I'm saying? I, exactly. I, I, I don't know. I think sometimes I think sometimes because he made you believe that he wasn't gonna judge you prior to getting to getting the pussy. So now there's judgment. You you but suck that, somebody dick so good, they like, damn, you you do that a lot, or you do that often, like. How you learn how to do that that trick? I say I don't know. I ain't never. I don't know. I guess that's some 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 dudes. I guess. Um, I don't know. I never been that guy to. Really, it's weird, right? Because I am an I, I am a, a solidified, verified overthinker, but that's one thing that I've never really gotten into doing was like having somebody be like really really good at at some sort of like sexual thing. And then, like, I'll enjoy the pleasure while it's happening, but then as soon as it's over, start wondering, like, how she learned it. Because, nigga, we know how she learned it. What the fuck do you mean? Like, 
But you have the guys that I've heard men say, like, she did that shit, that she did that shit too good. She threw that ass back too good. She rolled my dick too good. I ain't fucking with her. You know what I mean? Or she sucked my dick too good. I ain't fucking yeah. with her. Yeah. And let's not pretend. Come on now. Y'all, y'all know either y'all I've been that nigga is came. Shit. Yeah, that shit has come out too many times. Mm-hmm. And that shit is annoying. Like if or you eat the pussy real you, good. Or straight ghost you because the shit was fire. I ain't never heard a nigga say that. They like, I can't, I ain't getting my feelings. I ain't falling in love with that girl. That shit was just too good. <laughs> I ain't never, yeah. I ain't. I've heard when that men voodoo say pussy. this shit. Like, I'm and not, they'll I call can't you fuck voodoo her. pussy. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to die for she's going to cast a spell on me. I'm going to fall in love. I can't uh, uh, make all the excuses. Like, it's just too good. And then in five years, when the solar eclipse happens, then you get that text that says, hey, big head. And then you want to take it for another spin, and then another five years. You know what I mean? Like once every five years. I mean, you know, because if that pussy like Jeepers Creepers, nigga, like gotta, <laughs> every twenty three years, it must eat. You feel know I me? Mean? <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I ain't never heard that. Like I just be, you know, what I'm saying if somebody is uh, immaculately gifted at some shit that they do with their body like <laughs> i'm gonna just appreciate it for what it is like but i don't know i mean i guess that's i don't know i you know what i don't really i don't fear uh i don't fear getting i don't fear like falling in love with like pussy though so like maybe so you know what I mean? because like maybe like the deeper thing is like maybe some men know that if they love a woman's sex so much they're open to being you know manipulated by her you know what i'm saying like and they're just kind of like at her mercy but i don't really i don't have i don't have that fear because i don't feel like sex has that type of hold over mm-hmm. me if any you know what's, what's crazy like if anything the the hold that sex has on me is more mental than like the physical of it like it'll have a mental hold meaning like i'll be the nigga who's like trying to just figure out how to perfect it if I'm not perfecting it, you know what I'm saying? Like that will be the hold that, that I'll have, but I wouldn't have the hold of like the physical, like, yo, I need to have that shit again. I need her to suck my dick again. I need to fuck her again. Like I'm just be trying to, you know, what's, you know, what's crazy. The one, the, the one instance in sex that I actually enjoy the moment is when the moment has passed. <laughs> like I'll like, say if I have a, if I do have a really great sexual experience, but like, if it only happens like once, like I'm actually like in hindsight, looking back on it, I'm like, yo, that was a great moment. Like, I appreciate that. That was a, that was a dope time. That was a dope memory. I can jack off to that in the future. Like with my imagination, like that was dope and not really think twice about it. You know what I'm saying? But in the moment, I'm like, oh shit. Like, all right, is she liking it? Does she feel me? Am I am I in the room? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's weird. Why are you all up on the screen like that, Penelope? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yes, baby, serve face. Serve that face, I see you, boo. Oh my God. <laughs> Man, y'all niggas, be- y'all better, y'all better have a good story after this live show. <laughs> uh, I'm on the floor. Y'all ridiculous, man. But anyway, man, what's up? What's up with y'all, though, man? I know we, I know that the the conversation tonight was kind of heavy, so I'm trying to mix it up and keep it light in terms of like the whole therapy thing. Like, do y'all um, would y'all ever consider? going to going to therapy but like for the reason that i guess i'm going like on some on some sexual shit or do y'all just have it so perfected or not even perfected but do y'all have like have you guys perfected the living in the moment part where you think that you don't ever have any of maybe like some of the overthinking issues that that i always seem to have I'm definitely open to going to like a sex therapist. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Why do you, um, what, how do you think that it would benefit you though? Because you, because I mean, normally when we think of therapy. Hey, move, what are you shaking your head at? 
Not I was shaking my head at Jackson at first, but I'm talking to my fiance. She's high and she just sat like she literally just sat on me on the bed. She feels as though wherever I'm at in the bed, she has to be in the bed. Like there's a whole other side of the big ass bed. Hey fiance. Hey. <laughs> y'all wait, y'all on edibles or y'all smoking? I'm not on shit. I'm I'm I live life sober, bro. Fair enough. Fair enough. She's high off of smoking. <laughs> drugs, as you would call it. <laughs> drugs, yeah. I've got like this new drug thingy, and I can't wait to use it and show. You got a what? What she say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm, I guess it's like a bong. And then, like, when you squeeze it, like, it come out, like, in a line, the smoke. Your screen froze up, though. Okay, there, there you go. There you go. I thought that was a canteen. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it looked like. Um, but where you, where you pull the smoke from? Where you suck the smoke, smoke out of? Oh. Here. And then you just squeeze. Yeah, we can't hear you. It sounds oh. in and out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it comes out like a smoke stream. Oh. Oh. Okay. But what was you saying, Nick? Though uh, you were, you said you would love going. You would uh, actually be open to going to a sex therapist. I would you, absolutely. You, I, I would think? love to. I would love to learn why and how I process the the things that turn me on. Like, why am I attracted to this, seeing these visuals? Why am I, you know, drawn to this type of person because of this, that, or the other, you know what I mean? Mm. Like to really just get to the deep root of my fascination with a lot of very unusual um, kinks and fetishes. Okay. Because the shit that I like is way left for for black folks. (laughs) (laughs) So you- You know what I mean? Would you you prefer, so for that reason, would you prefer a black therapist or a white therapist? A black, always black, for sure. Okay. okay. What are the things you like? I'm, I'm curious. Like, what, what, what? <laughs> yeah. Vic, Vic, we'll like, talk after the Zoom. We'll talk. We'll she, talk. she said that so <laughs> left, like, like, like I'm like, what? Well, we know she be watching. She be watching gay porn, so that's one. That's that's one left. That's left enough. Putting for dudes in the Amazon position, like, what's going on? Nah, my my knees ain't built for that just yet. I'm getting there though. I'm getting there. I'll be damned if a woman said. <laughs> I, we can't hear you, Vic. Like a damn Thanksgiving turkey on a. <laughs> oh, damn, a woman damn. put her, her hand in the crease of my knees and push it, press it to my chest while she while she rocking me, bro. Like I can't. Like I can't. Why is rocking me? Like, like, I cannot. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious, man. I don't need but that. I mean, Vic, you know that, and you, know, I, I definitely love watching gay porn, and I've been watching gay porn since I was like my my early twenties. Like I've been on to that. The fine gay. Two Nigga. men. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, two, yeah, yeah. Either either two men me together. Go mute, man. Go <laughs> <laughs> but yo, either said- either two men together or a threesome with two men and a woman, but the men are bisexual. So everyone still is like kind of interchangeable. Right. You know what I mean? Um, pegging, love pegging into that heavy. Any any sort of prostate <laughs> stimulation I like, I enjoy. But I'm also, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a switch. I could be very dominant. I could be very submissive. So, but, but heavy on the pleasing when it comes to the prostate. So Hold up, y'all find the dudes in Philly? Cause Philly be hardcore. Like y'all find the dudes in Philly do this? You, you, I'm pretty sure you know some of the guys that. <laughs> uh, 
I don't like that implication, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know nobody out there. I don't like that like, implication. <laughs> She like funny. you know them, you... nah. But be the, that, be the regular guys, the regular guys that look like everybody in here. Like, yep. Nah, 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 nah. How nah, do y'all nah, even? Bro, that that nigga said, nah, them niggas don't look like me. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. They look just like you, Moo. <laughs> like, nah, no, chill, but no, chill, she's not, she's chill, not lying though. One, I know it's a lot of it's a lot of down low dudes in Philly. One, because I have like gay family members that's guys and they tell me like, yo, you would be surprised that nigga who you think a shooter or a thug or fuck all the bitches, he'd be in my yep. DM or I'd be texting him. Yeah. Yep. Or he might, or he might really still be a shooter and a thug. But he's still a <laughs> he nigga Omar, he Omar yep. from um, the he wife. Likes, he, likes, he likes certain acts, but he doesn't like them with a man. He likes them yeah. done by a woman. You know what I mean? thugs. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of guys. That's a lot of, you know, black guys that's exploring prostate stimulation right now. And I ain't mad at it. I, I love this shit. I told y'all what happened to me in the hospital, right? <laughs> Worst experience in my life, bro. That, I, I can't see how anybody would like that shit. That shit is like, mm -mm. You had to get an enema? No, I had to. They had to make sure I wasn't paralyzed. So they had to do a rectum and like. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I could admit that too. You feel me? That like, shit, the, when I tell you that shit you, so, was like, the worst that, thing that happened to me during the accident. That part, I hate that's it. That's a lot. That's I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna I think he had a ring on too. Vic, we can't hear you, Vic. Oh my fault. <laughs> nah, I went. On. I went to the emergency room one time because I was eating beets, and if you eat beets, like when you your your stool is basically gonna be red. So. One time I'm eating a lot of beets and I'm seeing that and I'm like, yo, I'm thinking something really wrong with me. Lord so I go, I go to the doctor, I go to the emergency room. I'm like, yo, something going on. Yo, this dude put on these, you know how they slap the gloves on when they put it on? <laughs> <laughs> I look at him, he's like, I'm like, yo, what you gonna do with that? He like, yo, you gotta turn around. And I'm like, yo, man, like, you know what I mean? Like, I like, whatever. This dude had two fingers and he did that. Bro, let me tell you something. First of all, he should have bought me a drink before he did that. If you're going <laughs> to violate me like that, you know what I mean? Buy me a drink first. And number two, if he did that with two fingers, I remember leaving. I'm like, how these dudes do it with a whole, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, if two fingers was making me sweat, how in the world, <laughs> like, like how in the world are y'all doing this, bro? Oh, like, seriously. <laughs> oh, man, yo. <laughs> Two fingers is making me sweat. <laughs> oh, I don't know how y'all doing this with others, yo. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, I don't know how you didn't put two and two together. Like, oh, <laughs> beats are this color. My shit's this nah, color. Nah, like, you know, when it, it, you start panicking when, like, everything is red and you like yo because i didn't think about the fact that i ate beets like because i ate beets the day before i didn't eat beets that day and that happened so you seeing that and i'm like yo like am i dying right now like yo what's uh, going on like, the only reason God. i know because remember i uh like i got i'd be drinking beet juice <laughs> or whatever because uh i you know i, I don't know if y'all remember but i had told the story when i was in houston and we was riding in the uber and the nigga who was driving the Uber was telling us about how like he was on this whole like uh weight super weight loss journey or whatever. And he I guess his like his blood pressure was so high he couldn't take any um he couldn't like take any like Viagra or nothing like that. So like the doctor told him like yo just start drinking beet juice because that basically is like the organic version of what Viagra or Cialis would give you. And he was like, yo, like I started drinking this shit and he was like, you know, sex with my wife has never been, has never been better. And shit like that. So I was like, I, I heard him say that. I said, oh, I think I went straight to Whole Foods after I got off the plane. Nigga. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> my, man, my man was meal, my man was meal prepping for the week off pizza, yo. <laughs> like, my man was like, this is what you you keep going, you keep like your, your sound keep going in and out, Vic. But I uh but yeah, I went to Whole Foods. I bought I bought a couple of fucking bottles and shit. And I drank, I you know, I was like, what I it was super disgusting, right? So what I would do is every time that I would like 
open the fridge to like get something else to drink, something real, like some uh, like some water or some soda or some some tea or something. I would just force myself to take one swig of the beet juice or whatever. So, you know, like with me, like being up super crazy hours of the night, editing, whatever, and I'm constantly like opening the fridge and shit, you know, like a few hours go by, like I'm, I'm like half, half down a bottle of fucking beet juice and shit. And, you know, the next day, and then a, a company, in addition to me, like eating broccoli and shit every fucking day. The, so the next day when it's time for me to have to, you know, go to the bathroom in the morning or whatever, nigga. I wipe, like, I go to wipe my ass, and, you know, when you fold the fucking joint, it looked like you bleeding out your asshole. I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, I had the same reaction That's initially. Exactly. That's but exactly then, what happened. Nigga, but, I, but, I then, but I didn't say, shit, let me go to the doctor to get my asshole fingered. I was just, right then, it, it, it took Yo, me like, bro. When you wipe well, let me call you Nick. Wipe like, what me go. Bro, let me tell you something. When you wipe it, it it immediately hit me that oh shit I've been I've been drinking something different that I don't normally drink. Nah, it hit hours. me like that. I, I thought I was dying. Like I saw that pic- I saw that on the paper. <laughs> you can convince me that I wasn't dying, bro. Like, and I ain't have insurance around that time. I'm like, yo, <laughs> how am I gonna like? I'm like, how am I gonna do this? Like, my, like yeah, urgent care. Like, my cap is one fifty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. For real, man. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely ain't never had had no doctor do that. Thank God. I, when I was a kid, I remember like that's how they used to take temperatures and shit like that. Though that shit was the worst. I'd be thinking like, why you can't just we can't put this under my tongue like a normal human being? Like, <laughs> but yeah, that that's got to be the worst though. That's trash. I know that that was the one that was the one time in history where somebody hoped that they were paralyzed. Like. So you couldn't feel, so you couldn't feel that shit. Like, that's crazy. I didn't even know they did that. Like, I didn't even know that that was the test. You would think that they and then, and then I was squeezing too, so it, it made it even worse. Like, they had to open me up. They had, they she was just, nah, the, nah. the one lady screamed out, she was like, just do rectum doing check, rectum check. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm squeezing, they turn me on my side and shit. And I'm just saying, they I'm separated me. I'm doing on them, Jew. It's like, we got, <laughs> we got a clincher. <laughs> that's something that I, uh, somebody told me when I was in high school like he was just like whatever you did like and it wasn't it was just a random conversation he was just like do not tense up do not clench do not do none of that that makes it worse and I was like you just got breeze odd but okay but now at, at 30 I'm like oh he was right <laughs> you just gotta breathe. Hit that. They could have <laughs> used the, the woman. The woman nurse could have did it though. They had to use the, the like the fat husky doctor bull with the fucking sausage fingers. Man, that shit. Yeah, like that's another question. Why wasn't it a woman that did this to me though? Not, not you. You making me really think now. Like why they had homeboy come up to me, slapping his gloves, looking at me in the eye. Like why? Why couldn't it be someone else, man? <laughs> Hey. So you want so you want know what's crazy that you said that because um so I have a, a guy gynecologist and people always be like why do you have a guy gynecologist but I feel like so it's like the same thing right so y'all go and y'all see male doctors I feel like they rough with y'all and that's how I feel about women doctors that they be rough when they do our paps and stuff versus of the opposite sex if you guys had a woman with smaller fingers, like she'll be more understanding in, uh, you know, and guys, like they're the same way. So maybe just ask next time if you got to go into the emergency room for your ass. No, I think, I mean, my like, like, ask. An emergency because you could call I me, Vic. I mean, I, you I know, I'll do my best. Phone, so they were just trying to make your sure thanks, that I wasn't mate. paralyzed, but still, that shit was like traumatizing to me. I never had that yeah. before. I would tell you right now, I couldn't look this dude in the eye right after. I was just like, yo, just write the thing on the paper. I'm out, man. I can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you yo. see me in the streets, keep it pushing, boy. Like, I'm, I'm good, bro. <laughs> like, Have y'all ever had a gay doctor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did that? <laughs> nah. No, and, and no, 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 no. I'm asking, though, because, like, this is a... um. And shit, this reminds me. I still gotta, I still gotta go back to the to take the fucking uh the test and shit. 
But for what? I, your driver's license? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For chop, when I, chop. Um, for when I when I went to go get my physical, <laughs> yo, yeah, you're a creep, yo. <laughs> Wait, why do but you look, have to take a test for your license? It's some fucking, it's some, it's some Pennsylvania shit, uh, I guess, because I ain't, I never heard of this, but I had to get a, a medical physical exam, examination, what, like, license, uh, as part of, yeah, a part of like getting like a, a PA license or whatever, right? So. Probably because he hasn't had a, a driver's license in so long. But I, it's not even like, say for instance, if I was like a, a first, if I was a first time driver, like that's just a process. Like, so if you came from New York, but you just transferred your shit over, you probably don't got to do it. But because I never transferred my Missouri license to the PA. So now is they basically looking at me like I ain't never drove before. So I got to like go through the whole entire. That's. I so wait, you have physical. to go, you have to take class and do the test and the driver's test and everything. I think you got to do a physical exam and then you probably got to take the written, like the, the permit test, which is a written test and then do a driver's test. Yeah, that's like that's what it seems like the process is. So when I went to go get the physical part, I you know I go into the uh, shit. I went to a fucking urgent urgent care or whatever center. Um, you know I'm giving the money, uh, pay for it. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. When you said physical, I thought you meant like in the car doing like the physical driving stuff. Like you may know like a res- like a real life. A physical, a physical a examination, yeah, a physical exam. Yeah, I know, right? So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in there, you know what I'm saying? I pay for the shit. And you know how you know when you go like for doctor's appointments and shit like that, you know, you you basically it's like you fucking on Mario, you gotta like beat the little bosses until you get the fucking the big uh <laughs> what's my man? What's what was the fucking Mario? Bowser, like you until you meet Bowser or some shit. So like I go into one room and it's like the 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 nurse person, you know, he's taking my blood pressure, put the like strap around my arm, ask me a few questions, like if um like if I got any allergies and shit like that. We just you know just casual conversation and whatever. And I get done with that, and he's like, all right, well go now go sit in this room or whatever, and then you know what I'm saying the doctor's gonna come in and then he'll compl- they'll complete the physical or whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool, bet. So I don't know if they do physicals. I don't know like how they do physicals now. Like this is what I'm thinking, right? So like, I don't know if they do physicals like this now, but I I always remember traumatic experiences from when I was a kid having to get physicals like every year, whether it be for school or for sports or for both. You know what I'm saying? You always get to the part where they got to check for your her- your hernia where you got to pull down your fucking pants, they they fucking put their hand on your nuts and like tell you to cough and shit or whatever. So that's like my traumatic experience from like fucking physicals as a child. Like, damn, I got to pull my dick out. I got to fucking, you know what I'm saying? So I'm in, the, I'm in the office or whatever and I'm just thinking like, all right, well, I got to pull my dick out again. And <laughs> so the, the, the doctor comes in, you know what I'm saying? And he says, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, how you doing? And he's like, hey, how you doing? But you could just, it was, <laughs> hey, how you doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> nigga jiggled your boss and said, period. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, so. <laughs> So the whole time, so like, I, you know, you know, like if you, if you a straight dude, even if you just a woman, man, whatever, like some, some gay people, they just give off gay energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like not trying to be politically incorrect or whatever. Like sometimes you just know a motherfucker gay. Sometimes you don't, but sometimes you do. So this was a situation where it was like, I knew immediately, I knew immediately what it was. So I'm in my mind. Like I don't get I don't give a fuck that the nigga's gay, but in my mind, I'm like, damn. <laughs> I hope this ain't the the me pull my dick out physical because that's just gonna be awkward. But I gotta like mature myself through it if that's what type of physical that this is, right? So like the whole time, 
you know, he got me doing these like super weird uh, physicals is like super or I don't know if it was just this place, but this the driving Pennsylvania physical is like a super weird task physical like they had me doing like uh i was like having to like do this and like do this and like like to test all your fucking like uh cognitive uh you know abilities and shit like that so like i had to do like the police the drunk test like hill walking hill to hill and get on my tippy it was like a whole bunch of shit that i just i don't remember ever having to do this for any kind of physical that i've ever gotten and i've gotten a bunch of physicals because i played sports for the first damn near 30 years of my life so and we do we go through all this shit and in my mind i'm just like all right man like just get to the dick part bro so we can get this shit over with <laughs> like you know what i'm saying chop chop you want to see it or not like, yeah, like i was just like come on bro like get the awkwardness out the way or whatever and then we get to the end right and he was like he was like all right and i was like that's it he was like yeah I was like, yeah. I've never been so excited to not pull my penis out in my whole life. <laughs> they, they made you take a physical for your driver's license in, in, for MPA? Yeah. I, I didn't have to do that. I don't remember that. Yeah, it might maybe it's some new shit. Like how I'm you should you got your license when you was like 16, 18, or uh I was 18. I don't think I had to do was take the eye test, which I failed miserably. Okay. Um, other than that, I just remember permit driving test and driving. That's it. I remember. Yeah, it might be some. It might be some new shit then that they just incorporated, not like you know recently or something. But I I've never heard of that in any other state. But apparently here you got to get a physical. So I don't know. But that shit was that shit was funny though. That shit was hilarious. I was like, I was like, whoo! Thank thank God because. Oh man. But strikingly, I've never, I've never, I've been in the hospital a lot, physicals and just being in getting fucked up a lot. But I've <laughs> never, I'm don't I don't remember having like a flamboyantly gay. Like I am pretty sure I had a gay doctor, but none of them have been flamboyant. I've yeah. never seen like a flamboyant cop either. That's kind of weird that I'm oh, thinking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Or like a flamboyant or firefighter. Like you know, but like, I know oh. a lot of gay firefighters. Oh, okay. But not flamboyant. I don't know. That's kind of strange though, because that's like the whole like YMCA outfit. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's strange. Because you would no, I'm just saying, like you would think <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Freeze, spread them. <laughs> oh shit. That's that's probably not. I shouldn't probably say that. That's hilarious, though. Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> Edit that out. Nah, man, y'all, man, the, the gays know I fuck with them, man. You feel me? Nah, but yeah, that that shit. I ain't gonna lie though. That shit had me nervous. I ain't gonna lie. And it was like it was conf- in my mind. It was so weird because it was conflicting, right? Because like I was like, oh man, I hope I. I was having like I was having like uh, homophobic thoughts, but knowing one hundred percent that I'm not homophobic, like you know what I'm saying. Like it was just, I was like, damn, should I should I be thinking this? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm a I'm a I'm, a, I'm horrible, like I'm a hypocrite or some shit. And I was like, nah, I'm just fucking oh. overthinker, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus. It's a disease. You need to get an exam to get your license. It's a disease, I tell you. <laughs> oh, a whore, I tell you. That's that's an inside joke. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Uh man, yeah, that shit was crazy though. But nah, man. Um shit, I, I don't know, man. What y'all niggas doing for Juneteenth, man? Anything? Just My niece flat. is having a housewarming, so I'll be over her place. I gotta go. Who? I bought her a deep freezer. My niece. Oh, oh, the the one with that was there. Yeah. Oh, nice, dope. So she's having a housewarming, so I bought her a deep freezer as a gift because you know she liked to cook, which yeah. means she liked to shop. Yeah, Mia, Mia, baby. What I ain't mean? got no pants on. Okay, just a shirt. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this means. I don't know what happened. Inside, don't worry. Inside. 
But um, yeah, no, she she cooks all the time. So I said, let me get her a deep freezer so she ain't got to go to the supermarket every other day. Oh, um, okay. because when she was here, she was buying so much food. She was putting food in my refrigerator and my mom's refrigerator. Oh shit. Like that's how she do. Damn, I still got to get one of these infamous plates, man. Because you used to talk about these fucking plates so much. You like Jack? You got a plate? I bought a plate to you that time. I don't. Re- I need another one because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, remember. come to the house tomorrow. She cooking. <laughs> well, shit. What? Your house? No, her house woman at oh. her house. Okay. Fuck that. Nah, I gotta, I gotta, um, I actually have a fucking, a gig tomorrow for some Juneteenth event. Uh, somebody was just randomly, like, hit me up, um, and asked me to come film some shit for some, some event or whatever, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do that. That's, like, from, like, that's, it's during the daytime or whatever, so hopefully it, uh, hopefully it'll be cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll see. And, Jax, did you have a young lady hit you up about, uh, the, the, the live show? Um, it wasn't about the live show. She she didn't really say. She did hit me up to answer your question. She told me kind of like, she told me that you referred her. She told me what her business consisted of, but she didn't really say exactly what she wanted. So I didn't know what it was about. So I, I replied to her. I told her to, uh, you know, go to the Not Jack's page, take a look at my work, and then just kind of like tell me what it was that she had in had in mind. All right, I'll, 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 I'll talk to her because she's like she's young and she's just um. She's just starting out. I know because in my recovery time, I had to think about it. I might not be able to cater the event, but if I, I'm, I'm going to try to get like two people. She does treats and like drinks. I was going to try to get her to uh, do it for you. And uh, one of my homies, he does catering. He has an uh, actual restaurant. I'm going to try to see if he can come down there and do it for you. He need more, uh, like more, you got, you, got a, you got a big following, believe it or not. So he needs more eyes on his business anyway. So I'm going to try to make that happen for you. Okay, bet, bet, bet. And I'm <laughs> what made you come to your senses, nigga? <laughs> Bro, see, I got it out right now, and I can only like this is the furthest I can like move my hand. I have like this is all plated. This oh. whole part of my hand is plated. So like closing my hand and doing anything is like can't even open a fucking apple juice bottle. That shit hurts. Yeah, it's probably yeah. not gonna happen, bro. And then once my hand is able to close, it's not gonna be like fully functional. Yeah. And I look like I got a witch hand right now. It's all black and skinny and wrinkly. I hate it. You're like, right, oh, my strong hand. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's You're right handed, Moo. Yeah, my whole right side, right in my right hand, hip, and foot. So it's just, I was in like a deep fucking depression for like two days. And I was thinking about therapy. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm not one of the people who is for therapy. I was thinking about like, damn, I might need to uh put this this um this this health insurance to use and get some therapy. I was like, yeah, sitting still. Like it's just the the sitting still part. Like I couldn't go get up to go to the bathroom by myself. Mm. I couldn't do anything but just sitting here watching nothing but TV and. And I'm one of them people that's like, not like, kind of like how you are, Jax. I'm just always moving. I'm never sitting still. So just to have to sit still and uh, not even be able to take a shower and shit like that, bro, that shit is, it was fucking with me bad. Yeah. Can't play with my son. It's making me feel less than a man. That's what it really was. Yeah. I feel it. I mean, shit, nigga, might as well put it to use, bro. Because even even though you said it was only for two days, remember when, I don't know if you remember when we was, uh, all kind of like ganging up on Travis, like low key, um, talking about. I think it was you who had pointed out to him, like when he was going through where he like lost his job and he felt like he was like sad and not himself. And then he ended up getting a job, another one. But you was like, yeah, bro, but you still like that still happened and you still never kind of like unpacked it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I like, just think my problem with therapy is I tried it, when I, I had therapy sessions and it was just like i don't know i think one because he was a white doctor and he was like oh and i could tell he had like a lot of money like he didn't understand what the fuck i was going through so like the questions he was asking me i was, I was more annoyed than anything but like i said i have a lot of friends that go to therapy i hear you guys talk about it and they like one of my friends he changed, changed into a different person after therapy so and palm said he started too he said he likes it a lot so, I don't know. so. yeah i know i know he started it like um I don't know, like a few months ago oh, or like, yeah. but I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know. 
I was thinking about it heavy because I haven't been like in my depression phase in so long. And just a, like, I felt the depression. Like normally when I'm in a depression, I don't feel it coming on, but I like, I felt that shit, bro. Yeah. And then I can just tell like my whole vibe just switched and I was kind of like being mean to people and like snappy. And I was like being real distant and want to talk to nobody in a dark place. Yeah. I know shit. I, I know. I know that feeling. I know that it and that shit is that shit is so it's so tricky because like it's like inside your body, right? Like you don't want to be like this. But you also can't stop yourself from being like this. And like it's just a vicious, it's a vicious cycle. Like it is that shit is weird. That shit is. I, I remember when I well, like when I went when I went through it, I hated that part about it, but I didn't have the motivation to like really do shit about it. Cause I didn't give a fuck. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's like I don't give a fuck. And I that's the most annoying that. part, trying to get yourself the motivation and psych yourself out. That's the part I hated about it the most. Like I like you said, I felt myself in it. And I'm like, yo, get out of it, get out of it, get out of it. And then it was like another part of me, like, man, fuck that shit. You got every right to feel like this. Yeah. But I just read my Bible, and then I think it was, like, my sister, she sent me, like, a um a verse from the Bible, and she also gave me, like, some some advice, like, you you being depressed and stressed out right now because your situation is not making it any better, try to make your situation better, no matter, like, how small it is, and that's kind of what got me out of it, but it was just, like, it was bad, and it was, like, like three days, bro, I just, and I, and I felt the switch go off, I felt the switch going from optimistic thinking of the positive to just being like, man, I hate this shit. Why me? Why the fuck was I on the bike that day? I wasn't even supposed to go out and started blaming myself about a bunch of other shit. And then I pulled other traumatic events into it. Having a pity party, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But that's what it do though. It's like, it's really, it's like, it's like, it's almost like a, like a, a poison no like you know what i'm saying cuz like it only it really it literally only takes it takes like one small drop for a de- for anyone's depression to creep back into your life like you really like like i know like for me like it's a it's it's like a conscious effort to not let it happen like you know what i'm saying like sometimes like even with with me like with the uh you know with this or whatever like you know what i'm saying anytime i come on here and talk about like how I'm feeling. I might be frustrated sometimes. And I always got to go back to that experience of like, when I did let it, let it poison me. It's like, you don't never, that's what I said. It's just like, you got to constantly tell yourself like, yo, nah, snap out of it. Like, nah, like don't let it. Cause if you, if you let it get a couple of drops in you, it's nothing that you could do. Like, it's almost like, like once it, once it has you, it has you. So you gotta like constantly kind of like slip that shit, like you know what I'm saying? It's, so I, I get I get what you mean. I get what you mean for sure. And that shit is a scary, especially if you've if you've experienced it before. It's scary at the thought of like going back into that headspace. And I and I think what makes it so scary is that it don't take much for you to slip up. You know what I'm saying? It don't. It really don't. It don't take much. Like. All it really takes is a couple of bad days, a couple of bad attitudes attached to those bad days, and then next thing you know, you right back, you right back into the bullshit. Like what really made me like, I was drink like I don't drink at all. Like even when I like drink occasionally, it's like a few drinks. Like I was drinking, drinking, and just soak like soaking and. Like you said, I thought about when I went through my depression before, and I knew like when I get into a depression, I just shut down and try to numb the pain by getting high. And that's one of the things I didn't want to start doing. I didn't want to start smoking again and just going back down the uh, a path that I fought my way out of. So, yeah. like I said, it was just I had to motivate myself. And like I said, that shit is annoying. Like, all right, come on, yeah. stop, stop, just come on, man. Like, <laughs> you're tripping, bro. Get up, man. That shit was annoying, bro. I'm just glad I'm out of it now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do they have you doing any um any kind of like super light physical therapy stuff yet or no? So on the twenty uh the twenty first, I go in to get my foot checked, my foot checked out, and they said they told me like when I got the surgery that um on the, like by the twenty first I should be able to start putting pressure on my foot, 
Like I can, I lost all the muscle in my uh, right leg. It looked like a fucking chopstick next to a, <laughs> a pole. That shit looks. Sick. But my brother, like my, like I said, I had a lot. Of, I got a lot of people in my corner that like checked up on me. Like my brother just came over like two days ago. He bought me like modified pieces for my controller, so I've I've been able to play the game the last two days, which is better than sitting in the like sitting around. Like some super embarrassing shit happened when he came. I thought I was good enough to go like just go to the store real quick and grab some stuff. I fucking fell, bro. Like, I need a life alert. I fell, bro. Like, and I, it wasn't like just like a like a slip fall. Like I said, you got a picture. My, I have a, the boot. The boot. I don't never remember of the boot being so fucking heavy. The boot is like 15 pounds, bro. Or that's what it feels like on my skinny ass leg. Mm. I was coming like the the. It's a parking lot, and then when you go into the store, it's like a a steep curve. So I went in to the store, came out. And just like just getting oh, from the felt, car, you fell in, in public. I fell in public, yes, bro. Oh shit, I'm thinking you're yeah. talking about you so like, in the crib. No, bro. I think I fall in the crib all the time. <laughs> 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 no, but I was coming. So mind you, like I'm supposed to not be out at all because I have an abrasion on my on my liver and it's and I'm producing a lot of carotene. And your body produces carotene when you're like sweating and like moving around. So my doctor doesn't want me moving, but I decided, you know, I'm going to go to the store and get some fresh air. I'm tired of being cooped up in the house and just like hop, I have to hop on the walk. So the walker is like the fucking devil. So I'm coming out of the store after it. I'm all in, I'm in a complete sweat already. And I like misjudged the curb and my walker like fell and I'm falling. And because I can't put any pressure on my hand or on my foot. I just had to take the fall and shit. And then I rolled a little bit. And then a lady, lady hopped out of her car. She's like, oh my God, sweetheart, are you okay? That's I wanted to leave the fuck alone. And then the somebody lab, walked into the, on, walked into the, the store fuck? and told my brother, oh. your friend fell. Then my brother came out like with the Saudi, like, come on, bro, I got you. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Hit him with the ah. This nigga out here like a senior citizen, bro. Like, sit Yo, the fuck down, nigga. No, no, wrote no cat. I don't understand why they would even give like the senior citizens a walker. Like, this shit is like the walker, the regular walker is trash. And then I have a lot of respect for amputees now, bro. Like, super respect. Like, when I see like the dude playing basketball with the one arm, bro, like, I have mm. a lot of respect for these people now, yo. Mm. And that's exactly what the fuck I feel like because I can't use the whole right side of my body. Yeah. But you have muscle atrophy too. So what the fuck makes you think your ass was gonna walk up some curb with a walker? Now I made it up the curb though. Easy, <laughs> hopped up the. Down. It was going down. So I don't. I can't. But really that's all curb. resistance. Going down the hill is all fucking resistance. Yo, the curb. So first of all, I don't remember the curb being that fucking high when I was coming up. <laughs> the curb. And then it was like a little. It was like a little dip, like a little crack dip in the asphalt, and my fucking walker got caught in that. And that's once the walker. I was done. Oh, it was over. God, and it was so Sit embarrassing. Your ass bro. Down. Because the lady hopped in the car, oh my God, are you okay? And then like two teenage kids just walk right past me looking down on me. I'm like, damn. That's bad. That's horrible, dog. How wait, how, so wait, how long has it how long has it been now? Like um it, been a, it ain't been it a happened, month. It, it, it happened on June, um, June second. I got the surgery June third. So about two weeks. I still got so they told me for my foot three to four weeks but like i said i went to one of the worst hospitals in fucking philly and i had when i came back home to jersey i went to the emergency room because my foot was like killing me one night and they told me now the hospital told me i didn't have a fracture on my foot my foot was just the glove but when i went to the other hospital they told me oh yes you have three fractures in your foot so now i'm thinking when i go to the follow-up there's three fucking that's crazy bro they told me one i don't know how you miss three fractures that's, that's... Yeah. yes <laughs> so first of all, the hospital I went to is a residential hospital, which means like 90% of all the doctors in there are students. Oh, okay. So, man, I, I was really thinking about getting a lawyer because the way I was treated in there and then like all the shit I've been going through. But I got three fractures in the foot. So I'm thinking when I go to the, to the actual doctor, not a resident, when I tell them that I have the fucking three fractures in my foot, I think they're going to try to and I hope they don't want to do surgery again or because I still I'm having like crazy, crazy pain in my foot, not from the actual like uh like what they did surgery on, but from the actual fracture. Like my ankle, like if I roll my roll my ankle around, it's like a clicking sound. Mm. 
blocks, but they told me my, my foot would heal way faster than my hand. My, they told me my hand has to, uh, like my body has to accept the, the metal and the plates and the screws and shit. Like right now, I'm not supposed to have my sling off because they said the screws can lift out and I would have to get the surgery over again. But fuck that cripple shit, bro. I get tired of having that fucking splint on, bro. That shit. Nigga, you're gonna be you're gonna be crippled if you don't follow the orders <laughs> in the beginning. Move put that shit on, yo. Put that shit on. Seriously. Let me tell you like this. Let me tell you like this. First of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up after this. My dad, he um he was driving, he used to do the trash truck shit or whatever, right? His dumb ass lost four fingers. I don't know how he did it, but the motherfuckers came off. They threw his fingers on ice, took his ass to the emergency room. They had to, you know, do all this stuff to get his fingers sewn back on. This man does not listen. They said, wear this splint, this splint, this splint, this splint. Now his fucking fingers is like this because he never wore the shit to keep the fucking shit straight so that his fingers could look like this again. So now his shit like this. <laughs> Don't be my dad, yo. Just bring your shit. <laughs> I think I think she was, when, he, right when, she told, when she told me to splint, so like this part of my hand, I'm not like this this finger, I'm not supposed to try to close it. So I I, I haven't been closing it. I just have it out so it can breathe because this shit get all itchy. Then it starts to smell a little bit, and then I have like this weird like mushy residue that. Yeah. And. I, I don't know. Probably starting Monday, I'll put this shit back on. But I just got out of the depression. I just listen. I just got out of the depression. I feel like myself like twenty five percent is good right now. So you do know if you happen to fall again and forget that you don't have this sling on, and you go to brace yourself with that hand, you're gonna be totally, totally fucked up, right? So, like I said, like I, I work said, in so, the OR, bro. I know. I've seen this before. Listen, um, I, I have, I think I've, I've like mastered the art of falling with the fucked up Jesus. hands. So now <laughs> I just yeah, fucking roll. You say that. Fucking you're roll. going to get fuck. used to not having that sling on, that sling on for a couple days, and you might forget. Oh no! So it's not, it's not all, it's not like it's not completely off for the day. Like it's just been off for like a few. I haven't had it off all day. I put it, I, I take it off and like let it rest and breathe. But I have it on though. I don't sleep with it off. I don't like if I'm going to like get in the shower or try to get in the shower or anything or any type of like hopping around the house. I have it on. I don't. Yo, look at when it gets I, itchy. Get a, a wire hanger. That's what we use when we get past a wire look hanger. At all of our faces right now. We like nigga. <laughs> I'm, I'm hard headed, man. And it's not like this is my this is my first like real surgery. I had to get on my hand, but I've like broke fingers, broke knuckles, and I had the cast on. They tell me three to four weeks. That should be off in two weeks. My left hand, it doesn't close right. Who mm. was your hand surgeon? I don't even, it's like five different people. They told me really? I'm going to be in surgery. They said, I said, how long was the surgery going to be? They said, like about an hour, an hour and a half. I was in surgery for five hours. My family thought I was dead. Yo. Mm. But they, they didn't call anybody they, or nothing. They kept, what, where'd you have your surgery at? Einstein Hospital. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Exactly where he was at, cause they they fucking ads. They it's terrible. I have exactly where he was at. Well, if you're looking for another surgeon um, or a second opinion, I um, recommend Dr. Traeger. He's he's amazing. He did both of my um, carpal tunnel surgeries, and they were yeah, they were awesome. I broke, I broke the um, the second, third metal carpal bone in my hand, and I broke like all four of like the all of my fingers. And I broke like another bone like near my thumb. So like my whole like front of my hand where I showed y'all, it's all plated. Got, like, mm -hmm. I got I got like three plates, screws, and rods and shit. They had to put my hand back together. And like I keep yeah, telling they it, lied to you. That shouldn't have took an hour. They that would have never taken an hour. No, it's something I don't know what stuff. took longer. I don't know what took they, they did the surgery for my foot and my hand at once. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's because there's residential doctors. Now, mind you, when I woke up, I was I had the numbing block, so uh, my whole right side was a noodle. But then when that shit wore off, my foot and my hand was in so much pain. They had it wrapped so tight because they wrapped it while I was like under anesthesia. So like that shit. Wow, was they wasn't sad. supposed to wrap it that tight. Yo, when yeah. I tell you, I like I've never cried from pain. When I woke up and after that numbing block wore off, I was screaming. For, like I was calling my mom, like mom, tell them to give me some more fucking medicine. Like they. Just shit told the emergency room. They didn't give just... you a morphine drip. I had the morphine. The emergency room had, just no, really they, they told me I couldn't get a drip. My mom was like, why can't he get dripped? They was like, um, 
Damn, oh, because of the abrasion right. on my liver. That's right. I couldn't get the drip oh. of the my liver. Oh, okay. But I was like on the highest dosage. Like they was like most guys that come in here, like most people that come in here, they only get like one milligram of the what do you call dilute or some shit like that? The lauded. The lauded. Yeah, yeah. I was on two, mill- was on two milligrams. <laughs> Hallelujah. He over here making up some shit. <laughs> I kept telling I said, yo, no, where that medicine with the D? Give me that D. Give me that medicine, please, please. Give me the D. Yes, say, me that baby. D. At that time, <laughs> yes. Oh my God. When but Delauded, but Delauded is a form of morphine as well. Yeah. Oh, and they told me like that so they like most people only get one milligram. They said people that get two milligram are like six hundred pounds. Like when they mm. cut like so I was I was on like Two milligrams mm-hmm. of that, and then like a half a milligram in between the time I was supposed to get it, and oxygen, chronic, I have and that's just still real wasn't working. Life chronic uh-huh. pain. Yeah. Term. So the lot was your long term, and your oxycontin was for your uh for short term pain. So man, they was to, they like, was shooting that shit in my IV. I was going, I would be talking, and I turn into like a fucking yo, dope what? fiend. Yo, that should have been. Yo, no lie though. Wasn't that the best sleep you ever had in surgery? Like, Yo. I didn't want to wake up. That sleep is... I, so I know why all, Michael Jackson was using that shit. Like, that is the best sleep ever. When I woke up from surgery, I was confused. As, first of all, I don't remember falling asleep. And then when I right. woke up, I was confused as fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah. I tried, to get, I tried to get out the bed and walk. They was like, no, 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 sit down, sit down. Please, please, don't, don't do that. Oh, yeah, people coming off of anesthesia. I've had um, nurses get punched in the face. They start fighting, like... That's me. Uh, this one nurse, her whole eye was black. I was like, yo, do you get combat pay? Because me and that patient would have been fighting. <laughs> but yeah. Me. Well, I was, um, and I didn't know I, that was my reaction to anesthesia. Um, I had to, I was rushed to the hospital. I, had, I was uh, pregnant in my fallopian tubes and like it was started hemorrhaging and I had to have emergency surgery to remove everything, right? Um, well, remove the pregnancy, not my, I, I have all my organs. Um, and when I woke up out of the, the anesthesia, I just immediately started cursing at the nurses. Where the fuck is my mom? Where the fuck is my mom? Try, like, like Moo, trying to get up. They were like, no, no, you have to live. We'll go get her. And I'm like, ready just to fight them. Uh-huh. So they had to like strap me to the, <laughs> to the fucking bed. They didn't know you like that I shit. I gotten so <laughs> violent. <laughs> What'd you say? I said they ain't know you like that shit. <laughs> yeah, no. But whenever after that, anytime I have to be anesthetized for any reason, I always tell them I get very violent, like coming up out of this anesthesia. They was like, wow. thank you for letting us know. Right. And I'm always like they always had me like bound in some type of way. It's crazy. Wow. That's crazy. That I never that's weird. I my surgery experience, I remember. Them niggas telling me to count down from like a hundred or something or ten, <laughs> and I I didn't I ain't even survive like four seconds. I was out, and then I woke up in a dark fucking room, and I didn't know where the fuck I was at. And my my whole my whole leg had like a cast on it, and I could I just couldn't move it. And I was like, and I was in pain because like part of the they didn't perfectly like uh, the padding kind of like ran out. So like the cast part was like kind of pinching my skin a little bit. Mm. And I was just in a dark fucking room. Like my mom wasn't there. Cause I, you know, it was the surgery probably took several hours. So she probably, you know, like left and was going to come back the next day or something. And I just, I just remember just not knowing it took me a while to like figure out, like to gather my surroundings. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it took you a while to overthink. Yeah. <laughs> I cried because they was waking me up. Okay? Like, brain, what are you doing, brain? <laughs> right? I don't get it together. Fucking malfunction. Like freaking baby, I cried. I was like, I don't want to wake. Like I was in, like tears were streaming down my face because that sleep was just so that that much. That was just that good. I did not want to wake up. I, I feel like, like that shit. That, <laughs> that, so crazy. The anesthesia sleep got to be like the closest thing to like death, like for real. Cause like. I don't, you don't even remember it. Like, Mm -mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, cause you, like when I go to sleep tonight, when I went to sleep last, like you can, you know, like, you know, when you're, you can remember when you went to sleep, like you can kind of low key remember like, oh yeah, you know, I was watching this and I went and I just kind of, you know, I felt myself doze off. Nigga, 10, nine, sleep. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you good, because I don't even remember nine. I remember 10. That was it. See, with my arms, they put like, they put, first they put something in an IV and was like, he was like, you're going to start to feel like relaxed. And I just remember feeling like real giggly and, and high and was just like talking to the doctor, laughing with the doctor. I had like two real cool dudes. They was like, reminded me of Seth Rogen and like the other skinny guy from Superbad. <laughs> so, we were, so we was just laughing the whole time. And then I remember somehow getting on to the operating table and he told me to mm-hmm. count down. And I just remember waking up. And I'm like, what yep. the fuck? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? We talk that whole time. When you when you go to sleep, the OR just talks. They talk about everything. <laughs> if y'all can hear some of the conversations we have, y'all be like, God damn. Jax, I don't understand how you survive like an operation with your overthink. Like when I was in a hospital, bro, I think at least like 50 people see me butt ass naked, bro. Fact. Well, <laughs> I was well, for one, I was only I was only like 12. Um and and he was an overthinker then. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm sure I was 12 years old. Like my shit, that shit hurt so bad, bro. I couldn't wait for them niggas to fix that shit. I'm like, do whatever the fuck y'all niggas need to do. Like, did they ask you uh, what music you wanted to listen to? Did they put that on? Nah, it wasn't on music. They didn't do that. I used to when I worked. Um, when I worked in ortho, um, all of our bad doctors used to always be like would ask our patients like that was like a part of their when they came and did they pre-op they'll be like well what music do you want to listen to um when you're getting put down for surgery and one of uh when I was working with this guy Dr. Smith he was like super cool it was all white too he was operating on this young black dude and the dude was like I want to listen to Tupac and I remember they didn't have his x-rays and I had to bring it, I had to bring it in there. And they like everybody in the OR was just like you said, they'd be talking about all kinds of shit, like mm. everything that was going on or whatever. Like and they was just talking about like this one time in college and how California love, like that was like the song that was just like <laughs> popping and like they all like and I'm just sitting up there like Dr. Smith, really? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like they just got a nigga open. He like, oh yeah, you know, go get that yep. x-ray. We need that. Like <laughs> Mm-hmm. They be in their own little. They be in their own little world. I've never, and everything like, is mad sexual I've never, in the like, too. Oh my shit! So many, like so fast, so many times. Like you know, like the from like just when your shit is on gummy, and then it's like semi school and then I had to do that shit like <laughs> so many fucking times, bro. Why? Wow. Like, that's. I don't trust know. me, I, trust I, me I, when I, I tell you, we don't even, even look at the human body side. like that. There's nothing sexual about the human body in the operating room. Trust me. Listen, that's because I already know I have I have a lot of family in like the medical, and I know that they sit around and talk and shit. So like, I just had to. That was <laughs> my oh, I overthink just like how he overthinks. All. I'm like, oh shit, I can't let him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we talk about you more if you don't have on clean underwear, or if your belly button dirty. That's hilarious. If yo. your belly button dirty, oh man, we will talk about you. you well, trash is never better, never not getting no shit. <laughs> fucking Walmart draws and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. It is mad embarrassing. I remember um, when I first started out, um, they kind of told us what our surgeries were going to be the next day, and mine was a hemorrhoidectomy. So I talked mm-hmm. to my teacher. She's like, oh, yeah, they tape your butt cheeks to the table. And da-da-da. she's telling me how it's going to go. The person that it was, it was this young, like, I think he was Hispanic, but he had, like, brown skin, so he could have been black. But he was young. Like, he had to be, like, 27. I was like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. This man is about to be. And they literally do tape your butt cheeks open to the table. Like this industrial tape, they just like, so they can get into, I was like, yo, this is so, emb-. I was embarrassed for him. I know he don't never, he didn't remember what I looked like. He could barely see me because, you know, we're garbed up, but still, I was so embarrassed. I was like, I never want a hemorrhoidectomy. Oh my God. So wait, what That's embarrassing. They, what they, they take your asshole out? Like, what does that even consist of? Well, you know, a, hem- a hemorrhoid is, um. Like Just extra skin on your uh, on your butt on your anus, and you might yeah. have multiple, and they have to go in and burn them off. So they take them off. Whew. It's the vein, right? It's the vein that kind of like the blood just like stops there from the pressure, right? Something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. 
but they're like they're like balls. Girl, they they really are balls. Oh. What she just said? What she said? And them bitches hurt. Oh, yeah, I heard they hurt. hurt. I've I never had, had them. The motherfuckers hurt. Yeah. Damn right. You but can't even it? go. You can't move your bowels correctly. How is it something that you like? From my understanding, I, isn't it? Is something that you can like? They come and then they go and then they come and like you know what I'm saying like or is it something that once you get it you got it unless you get it removed? I think they come and go. I, I, they, I remember they do come and go, but and sometimes go. they're past the point of no return and you have to oh. get them surgically removed. Like you, it is it true you can get them from the sitting on cold surfaces? I'm sorry. Is that, a, is, that, is that a myth that you get them from like sitting on cold surfaces? I've heard that. I don't know how you get them honestly. I you know, can get I know, them I know you can get them too hard. You know what I'm saying? Straining. So I don't, yeah. I don't, I have heard that, but I don't know. My understanding of, of how you get them, typically with pregnant women, because it's just so much weight on your pelvic region. Mm-hmm. So like all of that weight pushing down on you. And then of course, like moving your bowels and you like pushing because it's not, you know, coming out as it should. So like the pressure, just the mm-hmm. weight of the pressure of everything pushing down on you. And being yeah. overweight, like a lot of overweight people have hemorrhage. That should sound painful as fuck, bro. It, it mm-hmm. fucking is fucking it too. <laughs> it is. I remember I like cause I could re- like I remember having uh sometimes you get like like a like small like boils and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Or like a or like a fucking uh abscess. Or just like a fucking pimple. Like you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just get like a pimple like on your backside. And I remember Especially, honestly, like with athletes, sometimes it can be common because you're just doing so much sweating and mm-hmm. you've got like your compress- compression shorts on and shit like that. So like just trying to pop them little motherfuckers like that shit. <laughs> nah, because you know how like you're, you're, depending on like where it is on your body, like your skin be different. You be like trying to mm-hmm. turn like, and you know twist it. <laughs> like it's weird. Like some Your butt is way, way more sensitive than anything else. Like have you ever been in the shower? And on the front of you, the hot water doesn't hurt. But when you turn around, like your whole back and ass feel like it's like 85,000 degrees of water. And it's like, it was fine on my front. So what the heck? So, yeah. 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 And it's like, and I'm sure uh, Rock could probably attest to this. Because like, say for instance, if I'm trying to pop like a pimple, like right here, I'm cool. That shit don't hurt for real. Or right here, it don't hurt. But like, say if you feel like get joints like right under your eye. Mm-hmm. Or like right or like right on like your your lip skin it's like that's that's the skin just be different like it's like I, you could pop you could pop some shit right here nigga easy nigga pop right on the screen cool i don't I don't even i don't even say ouch nigga but then you try to pop this shit right here hell no that you i'll be screaming through this whole i had part. a i had an ingrown hair like what was that two summers ago mm-hmm. i had an ingrown hair in a gooch part and my dumb ass, everybody kept telling me, yo, stop, try, stop messing with it. You're going to infect it. It got infected when I tell you probably like. So you just don't listen. No, nah. I don't <laughs> listen. <laughs> right? Because this got a long history of this. Right, right. Doctor, I had, I've had it before. When I went to the doctor before and I had it, they told me, you know, you shave. So, and like, it's common, it's real, real common in Hispanic and black men for us to get them down there. So just like, it'll go away. And I told her, I said, well, this one has a head. Can I pop it? She told me before that I could pop it. The one, the second one I got that I had to get cut open, that shit had a head. But when I popped it, I guess I didn't get all of it out. And then it got infected. And then another ingrown hair grew in side the ingrown hair bump. I mean, it was like the size of a golf ball. Ooh. And it was like, it was like a like a week one by now. Mind you, my, my fiance and my mom was like on like day three when I couldn't sit down. It was like, you need to go Damn. to the hospital. Like, no, it'll go away. It'll go away. I hate the hospitals. And she like, be able to go away. When I went and they busted open, one, they numbed it, they numbed it, and it still hurt real bad. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, the smell that came out of it, oh my God. Because it was infected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shit, look, it's like first oatmeal. surgery, The first surgery I ever scrubbed in on, this <laughs> lady had an abscess on like the crease between her vagina and her thigh. Mm. First of all, her vagina was so swollen and big, it looked like if you touched it, it would have just exploded. Mm. Mm. so we had to cut her open and all this pus drained out and that's when I first found out that pus can be black and this was a white lady her pus Mm. was black so we had to wash it out we had to get it all out the smell in the room oh my god oh my god Mm. it was I was like how do you let it get to this point 
Jeez. Well, you don't know. You don't. I mean, you know. No. But you don't when know. I tell you her vagina looked like if you touched it, it would have exploded. Well, mom's like, was come like on, right she there, had but I don't to have, have a vagina. Mom's a right while. there. Huh? It, it was in the same. Mom's was in the same exact spot, but I don't have a vagina. It was like right in that thigh. <laughs> Thank you for that. That that thigh. Thank that five that. like ball area, like <laughs> my balls was hitting like it's like I had three balls. My balls was hitting the bump. That shit was huge. Damn. And it was like I couldn't sit down. Like laying down on the bed, I had to lay on one side to take a smash. It was like oh, I'm having like squat. Oh, and, oh, and the funny. doctor told me, she said, if you would have just listened to your mom and your fiance and came in on day two, you wouldn't be having to get it bust open. We could have gave you antibiotics. How long? Like, oh. So what day? What number day did you actually? Bro, it was like seven. I was no, it was. Like, it was <laughs> you like, heard in the almost, back. That's right. <laughs> it was probably like two, it was like ten days though, because I had after I popped it, it felt better. I was like, I'm gonna go play basketball and shit. I was chilling. Oh my god, nigga, this nigga, <laughs> he, he, this nigga opened the shit and poured sweat right back into that <laughs> motherfucker. That's oh man, that's gross, man. Mm, mm, mm. I know that shit stung like a motherfucker, bro. First of all, you no, know, it, 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 that's the thing. It didn't sting. Like I said, I get um, I get hair bumps a lot because I shave and like I have sensitive skin even like under my beard. When I go to the to the uh, not the doctors, the uh, barber. And they shaped me up under here. That's why I made them. I let them. I told them like, listen, don't even shape it up under there. I'll just let that shit grow out nasty and wild because them hair bumps, like you said, in certain areas hurt. And I just don't feel like that shit. But that one down there, I get them and I let them go away. Or if they get a hit, I just pop it, and I'd be cool. But maybe because I, I did play, I, didn't, I never played basketball. If I pop, when I played basketball, and it was like rub, like where it was at, like anytime I walked, it would just rub friction. Mm, mm, mm. That shit was bad, bro. Yeah, and like she said, when they pop way. that shit, when you, when you... shit, it's like black and like white, like 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 rotten oatmeal. That shit was. Yep. <laughs> we all, we all, this is a gross question because I just want to make sure I'm not weird. <laughs> you, <laughs> when you, when you pop some shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> do y'all look at that? Shot. This yeah, is what I do. I smell I'm, it. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. This, is what I do. No, wait. this is my pimple popping process, right? So, like, I'll pop it. I'll, you know, what I'm saying, like, and eh, do some shit like that. It's gonna, be, if it's on this fingernail, I'll put it on that fingernail, mm -hmm. and then I'll smash it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, humans yep. are disgusting. Why? Why do mm, I do mm, that? Mm. They ain't got to smell it. I'm like, oh, God, yo. You know when it's off. When you smell it, you you know the smell if it's off. Like, mm. Oh, that's gross, man. That's... No, I do not. I do not smell my pimples. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I don't have, I've never had, like, terrible skin, knock on wood. Like, oh, I've right. never had any... any like, nope. Yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty yeah, happy. Yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not a very hairy person. I've never, ever in my life shaved my legs ever. Me neither. Never had to. Oh, you never. Just, oh, okay. You just don't. You're not. My a... hair bumps just come from like all my hair bumps come in the same spots. It comes like under my underarms when I shave my underarms in the beginning of the summer. It comes in like the gooch area when I decide to shave like in the beginning of the summer, and like under hair. I've never had like I don't I, like you said I never had like bad skin where like my sister and my brother they went through that where they always had pimples all over their face and kept popping them and shit and I'm glad I never did because I'm a I'm a scab picker like I have tons of scars that never heal correctly because because you don't listen yeah that's, <laughs> that's so we use yeah, razors we you, do not razors. you don't use like um depilatory cream like Nair or anything like that you use straight razors. That, first of all, I wonder. I, I always wanted to use Nair, but that shit smells so bad to me. It like, does. and it scares me. And it scares me that like, it, it like it erases your hair. Like that shit scares me. Yeah, I don't want to put that on my skin for some reason. Like, yeah, because you fuck, you fuck around, have it on your head, and then your, then your fucking beard itch, and you're like, oh, oh shit, like. <laughs> It's not even like it ain't that serious. <laughs> no, because that's why I would I would never experiment with that shit neither. Fuck Dude, that. That's just but Nair, like a, Nair, that they make like different perm, scents bro. now with Nair. Like you, they make a lavender scent. They have a cocoa butter scent. That's I like the only thing I've ever When that shit like, start burning the hair, I, though, I, I no shave. matter what scent it is, when it start, starts burning the hair, it just smells like a perm going bad. That shit is. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I can live with that than them fucking boils and hair bumps. Like I'm good. No, what? So like. 
when I what I realized works for me is not using the actual like razor is the um the the what do you call that shit the little clipper things they, oh, the, those, okay when I use those I don't get the um I don't I don't get the bumps when I use an actual razor that shit yeah that so, yeah. That'll fuck you up. I, I ain't never used a razor. I don't know how to shave. I say I always use clippers, like yeah. always. Cause fuck that. I shit. get waxed, and I I just deal with the the bump because I love how it feels when it's waxed. I, I never I I used a razor one time on my coochie. I will never do that shit again. I got the worst hair bumps, like just on the top, on the on mm-hmm. the top part. I was like, what the fuck? Like it looked. It looked like a disease. Like it was bad because mm-hmm. it was. It wasn't hair bumps. Because I call myself being the fuck fancy and getting one of the razors that have like the moisturizing thing on the outside and all this whole other shit. <laughs> and not knowing at the time my skin was sensitive, so I had bumps that looked like white bumps in clumps. Mm, mm-hmm. Like it was terrible so like i would just take my finger and do like this and they would just all bust like Mm -hmm. it was bad it was bad and from that experience it like darkened my skin a little bit on the top of my pussy and Mm -hmm. after that i never used a razor again like ever yeah and the fact that that happened to me multiple times you think i would have stopped using a razor yo that's fucking (laughs) no not true not not right right that at all that's what really, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm with y'all say like, no, no. You I started like I right started on to, brand. Like, experiment with the razor like real early, like like eleven when used to, like when I had my pews. I'm like, mm, let, me, let me try this, and just became fun. But then I had to deal with, with rock, uh, not rock. What um Nick just said. I I was young and dumb, and then when I got older, I learned how to shave the correct way, like you shave down and not up. <laughs> right. <laughs> like a lot of my a lot of my hair bumps like started early. Now when I shave, I learned like trimming is good for me and just using the uh clipper, not the fucking razor though. Mm-hmm. That's like my last, 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 last option. I hate being hairy in the summertime. That shit is like mushy and like and I'm kind of hairy so that I can't do it. I'm gonna lie, I'm hairy. You're hairy. Yeah. <laughs> I use the razor on my chest though. That's it. <laughs> Like that, man. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I mean, it's crazy. But yo, man, I'm about to get out of here. I feel like that's a really great place to, to end. Um, but yeah, man, I'm about to try to actually get some sleep so I can go, you know what I'm saying, do the night jack shit tomorrow. Hopefully it's not gonna be super hot. Do you do y'all have any idea what the weather gonna be tomorrow? I don't know if y'all niggas is gonna be outside for this journey. 90. Time. I'm a certain protect. I'm not a weather girl. Oh my god. Uh tomorrow. <laughs> it'll be 90. I mean, that sound of that sound about right. Yeah, the, high is, the high is eighty eight. Yeah, it'll yeah. be hot. So, like, it yeah, matters. Man. You wear shorts and no sleeves, so it doesn't matter. He don't like being hot at all. I don't, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, got to bring a fucking towel and water. I hope these niggas don't got me running around like a fucking. I hope that shit just not trash like like last year. Me and fucking uh, me and Rock went to a call ourselves going to some kind of Juneteenth shit. Because, you know, I was like right off of I the remember hill. that. I remember that. Yeah. It was, it was right off of the hills of the, you know, the George Floyd shit. So, June, like, niggas was really hyped for, like, Juneteenth for, for once. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my my goofy ass, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going I'm to bring my camera. I'm going to get some fun. Because, I, you know, because I when we went to the fucking, uh, the whole shit going on downtown or Center City, I got brought my camera to that and that ended up turning out like, you know, it was for a bad reason, but it turned out being like a really dope, like visual and shit. So like, I'm mm-hmm. thinking there's going to be something like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm bring my camera or whatever. Man, we pull up to that motherfucker. It's just a bunch of niggas at a, at a park, like with Barbie, like barbecue. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it was, it was, it was dope as far as like the environment of it, but like aesthetically trash, like nah. So, you know, I don't know what this thing gonna look like tomorrow, but hopefully it's cool. Um, it's actually my first time. They want me to, they want me to film it, but they, they want to edit it on their own or whatever. So like after I, they just paying me for the filming part. So I'm gonna film it and I'm, I told them to bring their fucking laptops and then I'll just give them what's on my memory cards and then they're gonna give me the bread. And then we're gonna you go on. Our go way. Out there, I don't know. I go out there with your camera. Don't worry about and it. I, <laughs> I, 
Like, it's, it's cool. Can I'm people request that dope? Like, that's like that's that's that was that's what makes your videos like dope as fuck because listen, you edit them so good. His that's name ain't gonna be on that shit. <laughs> listen, listen. No, but but you know <laughs> what what I plan on doing if if it is if it does look like you know what I'm saying if it's put together nice like the event, I'm gonna I'll end up probably just putting it together myself. But what I'll do is I probably won't put it out until after they put it out because I still wouldn't want to like over, you know what I'm saying? Somebody paying me for some shit, I'm not going. Yeah, but you, know they, they, you know they're going to do some nigga shit with your visuals, right? I know that, I know it's going to piss me off. But that, and that's, yes. the, that's the reason why I want to just edit it myself. <laughs> yeah, all my like, even just for my bro. own for my own self, like you know what I'm saying. I, I, I've never heard that before. I would tell them, "Well, this is like if you want me to shoot it, it's, it's a package. Like it's not. They're gonna try to Instagram edit that man, shit. Man, like, that's easy money. Shit, Here you bro. go. If my name ain't yeah. on it, that's easy money. Here you yeah, go. That's what I'm saying, like it, that's 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 that was my thing. Like I get what you're saying, Mo, but if you're gonna give me a couple hundred to just fucking hit record <laughs> and then go go home. That shit, shit, right. but at the end of the day, that shit about to look like some bum ass blurry bullshit. <laughs> it ain't gonna be. It ain't gonna look nothing like how you would want it to. They gonna put it on an <laughs> app that's gonna cut the crispness out of it. Hey man, I ain't gonna lie. I'm I'm gonna be on the lookout for it though, cause it might be. Good. It might. They might have like a fire editor editor nigga in the back. He just and the shit gonna ain't gonna drop here. till Christmas. You ain't gonna see gonna it till motherfucking here, Christmas. Man, I should have never did that shit. This, that, and the third, and I, I can see it now. Uh, I can't wait for him to text me like, Nick, you see this bullshit? Uh, <laughs> like, oh, I'm a, I'm a y'all. The niggas who y'all definitely gonna get some text messages, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just letting y'all know. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's what's going down tomorrow? But nah, man, it should be, it should be. Hopefully, it'll be cool though. Hopefully, it'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Where's it at? It's somewhere in West. He told me to. Uh, put up on <laughs> no, it's definitely gonna be trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's ain't even say Mount Airy, you know. Uh, yeah, it's somewhere. West Oak Lane. No, he said West Philly. Oh. Somewhere, yeah, somewhere out here. So I don't know, well, bro. You just make sure you be careful out there too, because like West Philly right now, that's like it's like one of the. Between North Philly and West Philly right now, that's like the most active like of like homicides right now. Like that's why that's why I really moved from down west because where I lived at, I was in my block. My block was in between two blocks that was Warren down there. So and I live literally, I could throw a rock at the police district. They didn't care. So just be careful down there, bro. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Any fishy shit, get out. And you and it's not even the. It's, Me are gonna be uh, there. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Rock will be there with him. She just, she gonna pull the shot like, let's fucking go. Yeah. Let's it's go. One, <laughs> one with crowds. When it's hot, it's gonna be hot tomorrow. And then, like I said, niggas is beefing down there like real real heavy. So just just be careful because she can go left in point seconds down and down there for real. Yeah, so just be careful, bro. For sure. But uh, but yeah, man, y'all uh, thank y'all again for for coming on. Or whatever. I'm I'm sure I'll see y'all niggas next week. You know what I'm saying? Uh get y'all a break for the for the weekend and all that. And uh yeah, man, we'll be back in a in a couple of days, man. Y'all have a y'all have a dope weekend, dope Juneteenth, fuck whitey, all that, all that good shit. <laughs> and uh, <laughs>